hard work will never betray me. Description No matter how hard you work, you'll never beat a genius. I spent my whole life fighting against that fact, but, one day, I suddenly died in a car accident. I died, never having been rewarded for my hard work. But when I woke up, I was in a different world. I was reborn as the eldest son of the Fahrenheit family in the Highland Empire. What's more, I had a strange skill, practice makes perfect. Thanks to that skill, if I put in a certain amount of effort, I'll always receive an equal reward. Hard work, will never betray me again. Chapter 1 Second place again. I muttered to myself as I looked at the ranking on the report card that had been returned to me. Second place in modern literature, third place in classics literature, fourth place in English, eighth place in mathematics, sixth place in chemistry, third place in Japanese history, and first place in political science and economics out of 312 students in the third grade. I thought I had done my best, but once again, I was unable to take the top spot. I sighed and looked at the few students gathered in the front right corner of the classroom. Yikes! Kazuki, you're number one again. That's great! And you're in first place. Can you teach me how to study? I don't know. How about next Sunday? Thanks, Kazuki. I hear in commotion. Of group of people the person at the center of the commotion is Kazuki Sugawara, the genius among geniuses who has held the top spot and his grade for over a year now. He and I don't have much in common, but I consider him his rival. Ever since I entered this high school, I've never beaten him on exams. I don't join any clubs, I refuse to hang out with my classmates, and except for meals, baths, and my self-imposed reading quota, I've been studying relentlessly, and I still can't beat him. There are geniuses in every world, and Sugawara is the exact opposite of me. He is the ace of the basketball team, the student council president, and honor student. He was a winner of sorts with his good looks and popularity. This world is so unreasonable. No matter how much effort you put in, you can never compete with the wall of natural talent. I've been ridiculed as a Garrigan, called a bean sprout, and still, no matter how hard I try, I can't beat the genius. Even though the school is one of the most advanced schools in the prefecture, only one or two students are accepted to Tokyo University every year. I have no doubt that Kazuki Sugawara will be accepted. But for me, who is on the verge of becoming the runner-up in my grade, and has lost it several times, I honestly don't have the confidence to get in. There are many things that I can't achieve even though I've been living such a painstaking life. The genius, Kazuki Sugawara, has everything going for him, and even his girlfriend is constantly changing his mind. I was so frustrated that I couldn't stand it. I don't want to be defeated, so I'm half-heartedly working hard. I wanted to prove that the efforts of a mediocre genius can beat a genius, so I was reading my vocabulary book even on my way to and from school. Watch out! I didn't know what had happened. But when I came to my senses, the world was spinning around me, and then a loud noise. A bright light, and a strong shock hit me, and I knew that I had been hit by a car. Ugh. When I heard a strange voice coming out of my mouth as I was slammed into the ground. I could feel my whole body, which must have been hit hard by the car, slowly getting hot. There was a lot of commotion in the area, and I could see that the students from the same high school who were leaving school were paying attention to me. Are you okay? I heard such a voice from afar, but I couldn't make any reply. My whole body was hot, but for some reason I was getting cold. The chills were accompanied by an intense drowsiness, and I let go of my consciousness without being able to resist. The ambulance stopped. I couldn't hear the sirens. The red lights were glowing and spinning. There were several police cars stopped, and the police were calling out to the many onlookers. Yellow tape was stretched, and inside the tape, there was a section covered with a blue sheet. For some reason, I was watching this scene from above. I was about 10 meters up. After watching the scene in a daze for a few dozen seconds, I finally realized that I had died in an accident. This is what they call astral projection. It was quite an intense experience. It's not something you can experience very often. As I was doing this, I noticed that I was gradually ascending into the sky. I was already 30 meters up in the sky. It was ascension. It was getting harder and harder to see the commotion below me. 100 meters above the ground. 
this is what it feels like to look down on a city when you climb a mountain with a castle or something. I couldn't see much of what was going on below. 1,000 meters above the ground. This is what it feels like to look down from a mountain as high as Mount Fuji. You can see the whole city where I live. Well, I don't have any beloved childhood friends or special friends, so I don't have much attachment to it. My family didn't seem to expect much from me, and my life was boring. 10,000 meters above the ground. In short, 10 kilometers. I had finally surpassed Mount Everest. The edge of the earth looks round. I can no longer distinguish the world below except for a city or a forest. The speed of our ascent increases dramatically. Now I am 100 kilometers up in the sky. From here, I am already out of the atmosphere. Farewell Earth, hope we meet again. Even if I say, we may never meet again. I don't even know if reincarnation really exists, and there is no guarantee that I will ever be able to live as intelligent life on Earth again. At least if I are in a state right after I die, though, since I was discovered to be conscious in this way, maybe there is reincarnation. The sky above, or rather, outer space. The distance from the Earth is about 10,000 kilometers. I can already see the outline of the Earth clearly. It's a perfect circle. The Earth was blue. When I look at the Earth like this, I feel a little sad. I wonder where I'm going after this. There was no one who looked like God and there was no heaven above the clouds, but I was up there, so I must not be going to hell. My life has been nothing good, but I would like to go back to earth again. If it was possible, I'd like to live a life where my efforts are rewarded. Well, looking back on my life so far, I don't think such a dream is possible. In the first place, the earth is getting farther and farther away. I am past the moon. I am already close to Mars. I may be the first person in the history of mankind to see the surface of Mars in detail with the naked eye. Maybe that's the case with all dead people, but I can't see any other ghosts, even though there are probably many other dead people besides me. In other words, not everyone who dies will be able to see Mars up close. The people who go to hell will see the continental plates and mantle. So I'm a lucky guy. Well, since I died in a car accident. I could see Jupiter. It was very far away, but I could tell that it was huge. Every day I'm able to see something like that. No, I'm ascending to heaven all by myself. I mean, where is heaven? Isn't it the direction of the sun? Is that Pluton? The sun looks much smaller now. I'm starting to get lonely. I don't know how long I'm going to keep moving. I want to go home. I don't know where I'm going to go, though. I'm tired of. This is the Milky Way galaxy where I was born, Bar. Local galaxy group? I don't know. I don't know anymore. I'm not sure how many hours, days, or even years I've been doing this. I don't know how long it's been since my internal clock, body, no less. For a while, I was in a daze, feeling the mystery of the universe that I couldn't describe, and then my consciousness started to fade. My vision became blurry, I felt dizzy and warm and then my consciousness was completely cut off this time. Chapter 2 I take a big breath in, searching for air. Oga! Oga! Crying. I finally coming to sense. It seems that I have been reborn. Two years have passed since I was reborn. After that, as soon as I realized that I had been reborn, I rapidly fell asleep and lost consciousness. I remember hearing some kind of human voice in my ear, which I couldn't quite hear yet, and I remember being washed with warm water, so it seemed that my birth had was successful. For a while after that, my alfe was typical for baby, eat, plop, sleep even though I remembered my previous life clearly, I couldn't bear that urge. Even though she had the memory, it was a part of me that I couldn't help because I was a baby. I was a zero-year-old child with a strong mental age. In the meantime, two years have passed somehow. In the beginning, it was really hard for me to control my urges. In the beginning, it was really hard for me to control my urges, because I got hungry easily, pooped, and got sleepy every five minutes. The only emotions I had were pleasure and discomfort, so all I could do was cry or sleep. Recently, my mind has finally calmed down and I am able to control my emotions to a certain extent, but it was really hard until I got used to it. I felt sorry for my mother and father, 
who would wake me up in the middle of the night, and I would poop as hard as I could and bite my mother nipples with my gums that hadn't grown yet. Thanks to this, my mother's pink nipples, which were young and pretty, became a little dull. Now, I'm two years old. I was now two years old, and I had reached a certain level of maturity, and although my speech was still a bit sluggish, I was able to carry out simple daily conversations without difficulty. Mom I want TB1. Oh, Hal. Do you want to eat some rango nuts? Rango tabu. Rango fruit is a fruit that looks like an apple on earth. It tastes and feels exactly like an apple, but for some reason, its color is a poisonous bright blue, it can't be helped that it's a toddler with a slurred tongue. Don't miss it. My teeth are all grown in, so I can eat even hard foods like rango. I loved rango fruit because it was one of the few natural sweet foods in this world where sweetness is rare. Now, my mother called me Hal Cohen earlier, but that's not my real name. My full name is Eberhard Karlheinz von Flensburg Fahrenheit, which is a long fucking name. As you can imagine from the inclusion of the word von, I've succeeded in being reborn into a noble family. From the very beginning, I was suddenly on the winning side of life. Perhaps the deeds of my previous life had been recognized by the gods, but I was far away from the strict family rules and family riots peculiar to noble families and I had succeeded in leading a very comfortable life as an infant. My father was still very young at 25, but he was already acting as the head of the Fahrenheit Frontier family, which was a little strange for me since I didn't have a father I could respect in my previous life. My mother is 22 years old, three years younger than my father, and I have an older sister, so she had her baby at 18. This would be quite unusual compared to modern Japan. She looks like a Scandinavian beauty with her white skin and blonde hair, and looking at her four-year-old brother, who is almost twenty, but very cute, I think I must be a very handsome boy. But to think that I was sucking on the nipples of a woman whose mental age is almost the same as mine, the sense of immorality is pretty bad. I don't get sexually aroused at all because I'm a baby. I was able to grow up to the age where I could walk on my own, but I didn't spend the last two years eating and sleeping all the time. Most of the time, of course, that's true, but I also did a lot of research to see if I was in the right world. The best example of this is the status screen. However, it seems that this is not something that others can see. If I had some kind of appraisal ability that often appears in fantasy novels, I might be able to look into other people's status screens, but at least I and my family don't seem to have that kind of special ability. My sister begged my mother to show me my status, so I'm sure of it. This is my status. Eberhard Karlheinz. Von Flensburg Fahrenheit. Gender, male. Age, 2 years old. Life force, 12 out of 12. Magic power, 6354-6354. Physical ability 3. Intelligence 120. Magic attribute. Specific magic, shock. Specific skill. Continuity is power. Chapter 3. Age, 2 years old. Life force, 12 out of 12. Magic power, 6354-6354. Physical ability 3. Intelligence 120. Magic attribute. Specific magic, shock. Specific skill, continuity is power. This is my current status. First of all, my name is fucking long. Compared to the three kanji characters I had when I was in Japan, it's more than ten times longer. I'll skip the gender and age, since they're obvious. In short, it's HP, or physical strength. About a year ago, I almost died of a cold, I was in a great hurry. In this world, medical technology is not as advanced as in modern Japan, so the infant mortality rate is very high, my HP was down to one so I guess I die when my HP reaches zero. Thank God my mom is a healer magician. Next magic power. Yes, this is the main reason why, I know this world is not Earth. Also, the status screen. This world, it seems, has magic. It's hard to explain, because I didn't feel it on Earth. It's like chi in a fighting manga. I've been aware of the existence of magic since I was born, and I've spent a lot of time manipulating it, except for when I pooping and go to bed. I started by sensing the magic power inside and outside of me, and as I moved it around inside my body, 
changing its shape, stretching it, compressing it, etc., I learned how to handle it, and as I repeated the process of circulating it inside my body and compressing it, I noticed that my magic power gradually increased, over the next year and a half for the next year and a half. I worked hard to strengthen my magic power, and before I knew it, I had reached this terrible numbers. By the way, when you master the ability to sense magic power, you will also be able to sense the magic power that fills the bodies of others. As a result, I found out that my dad is around 4,000, my mom is 3,500, my sister is 100, and my mate is 85. My father never misses a day of training and repeatedly engages in mock battles with whom seems to be his subordinates, and judging from the fact that our family seems to be a martial arts family, I'd say that the maid's 85 is the average amount of magical power. It would be unbearable if my number was so monstrous that I was disowned for it. So the other day, I even developed a technique to hide the amount of magic power on the surface by compressing and sealing it deep inside my body. It's a skill that will come in handy in the future, so I'm glad I learned it while I still baby. Next, physical ability. 3 is a fair number for a 2-year-old. I can stand, walk, and sometimes run and make a mockery of myself, and even my 4-year-old sister can easily carry me. By the way, my father was more monstrous than me, and although I don't know the exact number because I can't use appraisal, he dragged a huge boar that looked like it weighed 2 tons lightly. I feel another world in this part of the world, back to our yard. If I'm the son of that father, I'm sure I'm going to be as muscular as he is. When I think about it, the fact that my previous life was so short makes me feel all the more excited. I'm not sure what to say. I'm thinking that it probably means IQ. There's probably no such thing as an intelligence quotient test in this world, but perhaps this status screen was not created by mankind. If it is being displayed by some kind of existence or phenomenon beyond human knowledge, it would not be surprising if an IQ index from the Earth is being used. By the way, 120 was my IQ when I was measured a few years ago. It's not a high IQ by any means, but I was ranked second in my grade at a preparatory school, so I can achieve a certain level of results if I work hard. I'm only two years old, so I'm sure I can improve my IQ even more with more effort. Aim for genius. IQ 200. The next magical attribute. I'm not quite sure about this one. I think it's something like the basic 4 or 5 attributes that you see in fantasy manga. No matter how much you think about it, it's just a guess, so read a book or ask someone to find out the details. Next, there is inherent magic. I'm not sure about this either. It's probably a magic that only I can use, and it's unique to me. But I don't know how to use it. I tried shouting, shock, in my brain. In my brain, I tried shouting, shock, but when I actually shouted shock, nothing happens. I was shocked, though, when I thought there was no one there, and when I shouted, there was a maid sister behind me, cleaning up. I was a little embarrassed by her smile as if she was looking at something cute. Finally, there is the unique skill of continuation is power. I believe this is the only and strongest cheat. This is because when you tap on the continuity is power part, a description appears as if it were a link. Unique skill, continuity is power. If the dust piles up, it will become a mountain, and thousands of thousands of raindrops will pierce even the rocks. Hard work always pays off, and as long as you continue to work hard, your abilities will continue to grow as well. Growth limit, none. The existence of this unique skill explains why my magic power is so abnormal. It seems that there is no lie in the explanation that the harder you work, the more you grow. Cheats are always a part of reincarnation in another world story. You could say that it's a template. There are some hard mode players like No Cheat and Peasant Starters, but as I was already in hard mode in my previous life, I want to have fun and be a cheerleader in this life. At the very least, I want the world to be a place where I am rewarded for my efforts. After my accidental death, as I ascended to the heavens, or rather, the universe, I wish that I could live a life where my efforts would be rewarded properly this time. I don't know if there really is a God, but if there is, I would like to give him or her my deepest gratitude. This is how I feel after being reincarnated in another world. This time, I want to be rewarded. I want to work hard, make an effort, be rewarded, and live happily. I'm only two years old. If the lifespan of people in this world is the same as that of people on earth, I have 80 years and a bit left. 
I'm going to live a satisfying life. I'm going to make a life that I'm happy with, and I'm going to look back at those people who are just living their lives without even trying. That would be the least I could do for the people who died without reward. Hard work will never bear me again. Now I know my status. Well, that's about all I know about my status. If possible, I'd like to read a book soon to learn more about magic. I'm a nobleman and a relatively high-ranking count of the frontier, so I'm sure they have books on magic. I heard that my mother is also a magician. Once that was decided, I set out to read the book. I waddled out of my room, I'm only two years old and I've already been given my own room. I waddled out of my room and started exploring, aiming for a study I hadn't seen yet. There's a saying, you know your way around someone else's house, but I've never even been to my own house, where there's a dining room and a salon, a kind of aristocratic version of a living room, and bathroom. I was not allowed to leave my room unless accompanied by a guardian, because the stairs and other places were dangerous. Even outside of the house, we have a garden, which is also very big, like an English garden plus a French garden. I don't get a chance to go out except when I take a walk with my mom in the garden. I can't wait to grow up and have more freedom of action. In childhood, if there is nothing to do, I will be bored to death. Chapter 4 My head is not very tall yet, so I explore the house, while being be careful not to fall down. The corridors seem to be made of marble, but it's not cold because of the expensive red carpet. I'm also thankful that the season is spring. Even though it was a nobleman's mansion, the it would probably be cold in winter. Unlike Japanese houses, aristocratic mansions have similar scenery that goes on and on, even though it is inside the house. There are ten or twenty doors of the same shape and color lined up in a row, and I'm sure I'll get lost in my own house soon. My room is on the first floor, with the morning sun shining in, on the far left when viewed from the north. From here, there are about a dozen rooms to the right, and then you come to a lobby-like area. At the top of the lobby, there is a magnificent staircase that you often see in western movies, leading up to the second floor, with a large door in between, and on the other side is a dining room and hall where small parties can be held. The stairs are still dangerous, so I can't go upstairs. So I continued search on the first floor. After passing through the lobby, equals I came to a row of rooms on the right side of the building, each the size of an elementary school classroom. At the very front is the small dining room, where our family usually eats meals. This room is only used by our family, and the servants use the servants' dining room in the servants' hall. It seems that the welfare of our family is perfect. Next to the dining room was the parlor. I don't usually have access to this room. I heard that my father often used this room to talk with envoys from the imperial capital, merchants, and nobles from other domains, but I'm not ready yet. After all, I was only two years old. Next to the parlor is the guest room. It seems that the guests stay in the room here. I've never been in this room either. Next was the bathroom. W.O.A. hot spring in this house. Well, when I say hot spring, it's not a natural hot spring, but just water boiled with magic tools. However, I like it very much because it has the atmosphere of a stylish public bath from my previous life. Since I'm still a child, I often take a bath with my family, and I've already learned the joy of soaking in hot water like an old man from Edo. Seeing my sister splashing me with hot water, my father said, Eberhard looks strangely old, and I was a little nervous that my reincarnation would be discovered. That aside, it was time for the next room. From here on, I entering a zone I don't know yet. Because all the rooms necessary for daily life are located in this area. I don't have many opportunities to enter beyond this point. It would be nice if there was a hidden room that led to the basement, like in Nobleman's Mansion. I paced down the dimly lit corridor, thinking about it. Master Hal? Ah! A shiver went down my spine. Even though it was my own house, I didn't know it all that well yet, and it was dimly lit. It was a dimly lit place, and I was feeling a bit creepy when this sudden call came. He was only two years old and was about to die of a heart attack. What's wrong? What's, is that you? Don't scare me. That's the second time I've said that, but don't let the slowness fool you. I'm only two years old. I'm sorry, too. I didn't mean to scare you. Oh, well, that's all right. This servant, or maid, is called Elisa. 
When I shouted shock, in my room to test the effect of the shock, she who was actually secretly cleaning the room I. There are many servants in this mansion. They are divided into various parts of this vast mansion and grounds. Among them, Elisa belongs to the butler and maidservant duty. In short, she is the caretaker of our family. And Elisa is my personal maid, the one who takes care of me and the rest of the family. What are you doing here, Master Hal? I want to read a book. There is study, it's on the second floor. Really? Every step of the stairs is too big for a two-year-old. You mustn't go upstairs by yourself because it's dangerous. I'll make a special effort to take you upstairs this time. Thank you. No, it's fine. Elisa picks me up and carries me in her arms. I felt happy as I was hugged by her ample chest. This is the privilege of being a child. Gee. We climbed up the stairs and after going through about three rooms, I found a rather spacious and splendid room. This is the study, and there are materials that have been passed down from generation to generation in the Fahrenheit family, so it's already like small museum. Wow. Indeed, the study was quite large for a such kind of room. The library was as large as an elementary school library. As Arisa held me in her arms, I gazed at the pile of books, which seemed to number in the tens of thousands, and asked her. Do we have any books on magic? On magic? Yes, W.R. have them. I see. In this world, magic is called witchcraft. Even in fantasy manga, whether it's magic or sorcery depends on the world you're reincarnated in. You can't tell which is more mainstream until you've been reincarnated. With me in her arms, Orisa walked over to the shelf that located opposite the window. She showed me a bookshelf with several books as thick as a dictionary. This whole shelf is dedicated to magic. Which book would you like to read first? The first one. Then let's start with the basics. Elisa then picked up a book called The Complete Book of Magic, for beginner's edition. The book was bound in a fine leather binding, giving it a sense of dignity. She set me down on the desk and chair provided in the study, I took the book from her, and opened it. The next moment, I was shocked and froze. I can't read. That's right. After all, I'm a two-year-old. Of course, my parents and tutor hadn't taught me to read. It's normal to learn such things when you're a little older. Elisa, please read. Elisa sits down on the seat next to me, peers over the side and starts reading aloud. If you'll excuse me. There are five miracles that the great God has given us. The first is reason. The second is words. The third is a dexterous hand. The fourth is fire. And the fifth is magic. To learn and practice magic is to thank and honor the gods. Suddenly, I heard an amazing sentence. It's very much like a Western medieval religion. After the great God created the world, he sent his own son down to earth and entrusted him with the rule of the world. That child is the first emperor of the empire. All those who are learning magic from now on should bear in mind that it is in accordance with the will of God that we learn magic and serve the emperor. This is the first thing you learn in any school, book, or institute when learning magic. Magic is a great power, and it would be a serious matter if it were to be used against the nation based on a wrong idea. It is said that the purpose of this lesson is to teach that with power comes responsibility, as well as loyalty to the empire. But is it still a little difficult for Master Hal to understand? No, I kind of get it. What? Perhaps this is similar to the close relationship that or religion and moral education that was on earth. In fact, it may be exactly the same. Churches and temples provide moral education to the people in the form of the teachings of God and Buddha. The powers that be protect the churches in order to protect the teachings that are convenient for the state. In this way, the sacred and the secular have maintained a balance in a relationship of holding and holding. It will be no different in this world. In fact, religious education is probably more important in this world than on earth because of the existence of the more mysterious power of magic. Do you understand what I just explained? Well, yes, read on. Yes. Then I will continue. In addition to non-attribute magic that does not involve attribute changes in magic, there are four attributes called the basic four attributes of fire, water, wind, 
and earth that require attribute changes. All people have one of these four attributes, although there are differences in their strength. The four attributes are assessed at the time of the seven crown ceremony at the shrine. It is common to find out, but it is not always the case for those who can check the status on their own. Well, for ordinary people, the seven crown ceremony. Ah, the seven crown ceremony is a ceremony to celebrate the successful growth on the seventh birthday. Then, at the earliest, it seems that a priest is called to the house and appraised at the age of four or five. By the way, I have a fire attribute. I can use magic, but. What? Master Hal Dash? What happened? It's a lie, isn't it? I was shocked again and froze. All people, with varying degrees of strength, possess one of these four attributes? The magic attribute that shown in my status is non attribute, dash. T slash and yup, I started and playing one more series. Hope you will enjoy that one as well. Chapter 5 Non attribute, that's what show my status. In short, I have absolutely no aptitude for attribute magic. The only possibilities left for me to use non attribute magic and the unique magic of shock. All people have certain attributes that they are suited for, so why I have nothing? The clue to the answer is the difference between me and the rest in this world. I have memories of a previous life that are different from this world. Perhaps that has something to do with it. There must be a certain amount of information that can be stored in the soul, and in my case, because of the memories of my previous life, the memory that would normally be used to store information about magical attributes is being destroyed. If that's the case, there's no point in worrying about it. So let's put that aside for the moment and think about the magic I can use. I'm sure I can use, shock. If I can't use it in the first place, it won't show up in my status. The fact that it is displayed means that it is paradoxically usable. I'm sure I can use non-attribute magic as well. This is because there is a precedent that I have already been training in magic manipulation for a year and a half. If I am not suited to magic manipulation at all, or if I don't have any magic power to begin with, then I may indeed not be able to use magic. But I can manipulate magic with such precision, and my magic power is 1.5 times that of my father. It would be strange if he couldn't use magic. That's why I decided to train non-attribute magic and unique magic. I don't know how to use magic or how to use, shock, but I guess I'll have to control the magic power somehow. My parents probably won't teach me magic yet, and I'm sure Elisa, who works for them, won't either. So there was only one thing for me to do. First, I have to learn how to write, then I have to work on the complete book of magic, basic edition and study magic on my own. Isa. What is it? Teach me. You want to learn how to write already? Yes. Hmm, yes. I'm sure I can teach you the letters, even if it's something technical. Yes, I understand. Then I'll teach you. Thank you. From that day on, I began to study with Elisa for about an hour every day at lunchtime. We started with the basic alphabet, or something like that, followed by more complicated characters, probably kanji in Japan, symbols, and then more complicated characters of a completely different system. Isa, what's this complicated thing? A few days after I started studying, I asked Elisa. I had no idea what this completely different system of letters was. It was like studying English and suddenly Sanskrit came out of nowhere. This is called runes, and it's necessary for magic. TC, but they are the most rudimentary characters that we use in our daily lives. Wow! It's said to be a powerful script that was used during the time of ancient magical civilizations. Wow! We had runes on Earth, too. It seems to be an ancient Germanic script, and was used in Northern Europe until relatively recently, or something. Of course, the runes of this world are completely different from those of Earth. But the fact that they were used in ancient times is very interesting and similar. I don't know much about it either. There are several ways to use magic. There's the way of manipulating magic power, the way of using magic circles, and the way of using these runes. I've heard that casting spells is also a derivative of these runes. Well, I'm an amateur magician, so I only know general knowledge. I think it would be better to ask the head of the family or his wife for a detailed explanation. Yes, I'll ask them next time. Well, let's continue. 
with my questions cleared up, I started studying again, feeling refreshed. I've already learned most of the simple alphabet, so I've been reading books for children. I'm going to learn the details of grammar and phrases from reading books like this. It's not that difficult since I already have the basic grammar in my head from daily conversation. Learning a language is all about accumulating every day. 8 spoke asterisk. For years have passed since then. I'm 6 years old now, and my language skills are flawless. My speech has improved to some extent, and I can speak clearly, and my writing is perfect. My magic has also grown a lot. In addition to my daily training in manipulating magic power, I have also mastered the theory and usage of magic. In the complete book of magic, basic edition, standard and applied sections, and I have already reached the applied section. Also, it was still difficult to learn on my own. Elisa was unreliable when it came to magic, so I tried to learn on my own at first, but it was difficult to convert magic power into magic. So I asked my mother for help, and she was surprised to find that I was already interested in magic. She was even more surprised when I tried to write letters. A private tutor was hired because of this, but as expected, he was hired by a prestigious nobleman, and unlike some maids, they were all very good at teaching. The maid, Elisa, was praised by my parents for discovering my talent. Thanks to her, Elisa was officially assigned as my personal maid, and since I didn't have to move around anymore, I was lucky to have someone who was used to being around me. Well, I've grown a lot in the past four years. Here's the status. Eberhard Karlheinz. Von Flensburg Fahrenheit. Life Force, 126 of 126. Magic Power, 23298-23298. Physical Ability, 42. Intelligence, 131. Resistance, 96. Magic Attribute. Specific Magic, Shock. Specific Skill, Continuity is Power. Overall, my status has increased a lot. From a two-year-old to a six-year-old. The progress from infant to toddler is huge. At the very least, my resistance to colds and injuries has definitely improved. It looks like I won't have to worry about the high infant mortality rate, which is a major factor in lowering the average age in the Middle Ages. My family is a noble family, so I have a big advantage over the peasants in terms of hygiene. My magic power has also grown considerably. I've been practicing every day for four years, so it would be strange if I didn't grow. The amount of magic power is already almost six times that of my father. I'm sure my parents know about it. It's not just that they have great magic power. I'm not just a great magician, that's what they call wizards in this world. He seems to be a great mage and I seems to be able to detect my hidden talent. That's not the only thing that has changed in the past four years. I had a younger brother and sister. My father and mother are young, and I thought they must be having a lot of them eat but sure enough, they were born. My brother was born when I was three, and my sister when I was five. My brother was three years old and my sister was one year old. My sister is two years older than me, so I now have four siblings. This may not seem like a lot for this time period but I think it would not be surprising if two or three more were born. Or rather, they will be born. Why go to the trouble of giving a child a single room, while the parents have a separate bedroom? It goes without saying. Just as I was thinking about my bright family plan, there was a knock on the door of my room. I was currently in between self-study and thinking. I wonder if my tutor has arrived. I didn't have any plans for today. Master Hal Dash, are you here? It was Elisa's voice. Yes, I'm here. Come in. Excuse me. The door opened with a bang, and Elisa walked in. Four years have passed since then. At the time, Elisa was still a little young, but now she's a grown woman. She's probably about 20 years old. I don't know her exact age because I tried to ask her about her age before, but she gave me the slip. Your father and mother are here to see you. I think they would like to talk to you after lunch. A talk? What is it? Did they find out about the prank in the backyard? No, they didn't seem angry, so I don't think they going to scold me. I mean, what is a backyard prank? They are the servants who clean up after them. It's not really a prank, but it's not vicious. 
it's just a little magic practice that made a big hole. That's enough trouble. It's dangerous, so please don't be too reckless. Hmm, I'll do my best. I see no sign of remorse. Come on, let's eat. I'm starving. Yes, let's go. The standard of the food is very high, and even I, who know about modern Japanese food, am satisfied with the quality. Thanks to this, I look forward to my meals every day and praise the cook every time I finish eating. I walk down the stairs and down the corridor, the location of my room has changed over the past four years, and now my room is on the second floor, to the cafeteria. My parents, older sister, younger brother and younger sister were all in the dining room, except for me, and I seem to be the last one there. Sorry to keep you waiting. No, it's okay. Karlheinz Klaus von Fahrenheit, the head of the Fahrenheit Frontier family, told me so. It certainly doesn't seem like a stuffy place. He's just as usual dignified, yet somewhat gentle self. Then, thank nature. Give thanks to nature. This is like Itadakamasu in Japan, or Amen in the West. Today's lunch consisted of stewed wildfowl caught in our territory and fluffy bread baked with high-quality wheat harvested in our territory. On the side menu was a salad that looked like something you'd find at a fancy restaurant, and something that looked like roast beef, not strictly beef, because it wasn't but it was a cow-like creature. Even if it has iron horns. A few slices of roast beef, even if it has iron horns. Chapter 6 After a very tasty lunch and a cup of tea, father opened his mouth. Eberhard. What is it? Even though he didn't seem to be angry, I felt a little nervous when he called out to me in such a formal manner. There's someone I want you to meet. Someone you want me to meet? Yeah. I want you to meet, or rather, I want you to be her friend. Her friend. In my previous life, I didn't have anyone that close to me, so the word friend has a certain amount of longing in it. It's not that I don't want to have friends. It's not that, it's just that I didn't have the time to make them in my previous life. As you know, the Fahrenheit Frontier Count family is a prestigious noble family that is responsible for the protection of the northern part of the empire. Yes, I know it. In addition to the five usual titles of Baron, Viscount, Count, Marquis, and Duke, there is another a title frontier count in the Empire, strictly speaking, there are two more titles, Knight and Quarter Baron, but these have a slightly different character from the usual nobility, so I will skip them for now. The Count of the Frontier is treated as the same rank as the Marquis, but as the name suggests, our role is somewhat different from other nobles. The territory of the Frontier Count family is literally on the frontier of the Empire. We are a prestigious military noble family that is trusted by the Emperor, who has entrusted us with the defense of the Empire on the front lines against threats from all directions, east, west, north, south, and south. That is the origin of the title of Count of the Frontier. The Fahrenheit Frontier Counts are responsible for the defense of the northern part of the country and we hold the position of Northern General, the strongest of the four frontier counts. From the northwest to the north, there is a large mountain range, from the foot of the northern mountain range to the northeast, there is a dangerous area called the Demon Forest, and to the east, there is the borderline with the Principality Federation. As such, our frontier count family is in the upper echelon of the imperial aristocracy. So we have many relationships and business dealings with them. In addition to being a military officer, we also have to act as a civil servant. In that sense, the nobility is also quite a challenge. You seem to have some idea of what I'm talking about, but let me tell you something. The person you're going to meet this time is the person who may become your future wife. My future wife? I hadn't expected that. I had thought that it would be a hostage situation like the relationship between Nabunaga and Ayasu, but it seems that this is not the case. In fact, if you think about it calmly, the political situation in the imperial kingdom is quite stable, so there is no reason for hostage negotiations to occur frequently. The situation is completely different from that of Japan during the Warring States period. The other party was a duke. Although they don't have the right to inherit the throne, they are part of the royal family. The eldest daughter of the family is the same age as you. I'm happy to announce that we are negotiating for your marriage. The scale is huge. In Japan, it's like being told that you will become a relative of the royal family. Well, don't worry. 
His Excellency the Duke is a mild-mannered man. I heard that the girl you are going to marry is a good girl and pretty, though she is a bit of a tomboy. I'm sure you'll like her. Ha, ha. What, are you nervous? I am. After all, I've never had a girlfriend in my life, including my previous life. I. The fact that I have memories of my previous life makes me feel sad and painful. You can't expect a virgin to have communication skills, can you? Even if I am rude to a girl and she doesn't like me, please don't disown me. That's unusual. I'm surprised you're so reticent. Al, you'll be fine. You are very handsome, just like your father. Mom. This lovey-dovey couple doesn't care if they're in front of the kids or not, they just want to make out with each other. It's not good for their emotional education. It's not that there are not aspects of. That can help build a rich personality by maintaining good marital relations and showing an example of honest expression of love and affection, but it's not something that can be denied in general. It's just that it's a little too sweet for my mentally young sisters and brothers and sisters, but for me, who is almost an adult, it gives me heartburn. It's not bad. But in moderation. When is the girl coming? Tomorrow. That's too sudden. No, the schedule itself was decided a long time ago, but it's not finalized yet, so it's not clear when it will happen. I can't let you get your hopes up in such a situation. I appreciate your concern, but I needed a little more time to prepare my mind. I've prepared a dress that will suit you, Master Hal, so we can try it on afterwards. Just in time, Elisa, who was standing behind me, intervened. I'm not going to let you get away with it, no matter what. Hmm. Come to the salon when you're dressed. Show them off to your sisters and brothers. I'm looking forward to it too. As usual, my mother was very caring about her children, and I was taken to the salon by Elisa to change my clothes. By the way, the clothes that Elisa and other servants had bought were in excellent taste, and I liked them very much. This is certainly a handsome boy. It was inevitable that he would be popular. It was very well received by my sisters and brothers. Eight spoke asterisk. The next day. After eating breakfast and getting ready with Elisa's help, I was waiting at the front door. It was about 10 a.m. If I had left the neighboring in town early in the morning, I should have arrived at the castle town by now. Well, it looks like they here. Father standing next to me muttered. I could see an elegant carriage pulled by a fine horse slowly approaching from the gate in front of the vast garden. It was a duke, albeit a friendly one. Be sure not to be rude to him. I'm sure you'll be fine, though. I'll be careful. I've already mastered detailed etiquette as part of my education in the noble family, and my mental age is mature enough to handle attentiveness without any problems. It's difficult for me to handle the divine like a professional customer service person, but I can handle the ritualistic interpersonal skills. The carriage came to a stop in front of us. They got off first and opened the carriage door. First, a gentleman in his late thirties got out of the carriage, and then a girl about my age, actually, she seemed to be the same age as me, got out. I was shocked. What can I say, I get shocked often, but I don't think I've had this many shocks in my life. An elegantly designed dress with white ruffles. Light brown leather shoes. Her skin was white and porcelain like a bisque doll. Her blonde hair was gently curved and shone golden in the sunlight. Eyes like glass beads, clear and blue. I stood there like an idiot, vaguely thinking that this was probably what a fateful encounter would be like, but the greeting I had prepared had completely blown my mind. Hello. Good day to you. You're like a real princess. I was thinking about that in my foggy head. Chapter 7 Good day, to you. I witness a real princess and become completely rigid. In this life, I'm a real nobleman, but inside I'm a young virgin from the common folk. The greeting that I had prepared was blown out of my mind, and I was showing a face that was unreadable to noblemen. Welcome, Your Excellency. It's been a long time since I've seen you, so it's a great honor to see you here. I'm glad to see you are in such good health, North General. It is because of outstanding people like you that we can sleep with our pillows high. What are you saying? My work is only possible because of the Duke's strong support. Ha ha, you are too modest, Lord Fahrenheit. And this you're the legitimate son, Eberhard, aren't he? 
just as I thought the old men were exchanging greetings with their aristocratic talk, they seemed to get along with each other well enough to call it social etiquette, so they probably meant it, the contradiction came to me. Yes, this is my eldest son, Eberhard. Eberhard, and I am very glad that you care for him, even though he is not a perfect. I've heard that he is quite brilliant at such a young age. Whenever I hear gossip about him through social gatherings, I am always impressed by the fact that he is the son of Lord Fahrenheit. T hat's too kind of you to say. It would be better to say hello to her. I'm sure you'll understand. You can't stay in a daze forever. The first time we met I am, Karl Heinz Klaus von Fahrenheit's son, Eberhard Karl Heinz von Flensburg Fahrenheit. I eh, is still in my infancy, but I look forward to working with you. Well, I am Lagarde von Bernstein, the head of the Duke of Bernstein, which is located next to your father's frontier county. I am delighted to have made the acquaintance of a young man with such a promising future as yours. That's very kind of you to say. I'm sure the language is fine now. I don't know how great a duke is, but his aura is clearly different. I feel that my father is great as general, but the duke is even greater. Well, he looks about ten years older than my father, so I guess the difference is due to his age. Then the duke called his daughter who was waiting behind him. Lily, come here. Yes, father. The girl called Lily walked up in front of us, bowed gracefully and said in a beautiful voice like a bell rolling. I'm Henriette Lily von Bernstein. I the eldest daughter of the Dukes of Bernstein. Please make my acquaintance. Thank you for your kindness. I look forward to working with Jan. Nice to meet you. I don't know what to say in this situation. What should I say to the Duke? But she was a six-year-old girl, the same age as me. It would not shorten the distance between us even if I returned the greeting in a strange and elaborate manner. And moreover, she might be my bride-to-be. I thought it would make a better impression if I was friendly. That's why I dared to reply softly. Hm. What came back was an indescribable laugh. I don't know if I succeeded or failed. Seeing us like that, His Excellency the Duke opened his mouth. And now, we have something important to discuss. T, and you two should go and have some fun together. I was suddenly confronted with a hard problem. Do you want me to be alone with a girl? Is it okay if I don't have an escort? Nice assist, old man. I'm not sure I can hold a conversation without at least mixing in Arisa or one of servants. This is your house, isn't it? Then there is no danger. Or do you feel uneasy about being alone with me? No way. You two are going to have to get along. Uh-huh. I know, uncle. Let's go, then. Yes, let's. It seems that it is the dukes who are thinking more positively about this engagement. Eight spoke asterisk. So, let's go, shall we? Where are we going? I turned to Lily with a cold sweat on my back, shoving myself as hard as I could inside. This is the first time I've seen her up close and personal, and she's so pretty and beautiful that I can't believe she's from this world. The garden we saw on the way here was so beautiful, I want to look around some more. What? The beautiful voice that sounds like a rolling bell is still there, but the tone of voice has changed. Hmm, that was just my way of talking to people. My father gave me a lot of cajoling to learn it better. I guess we're all the same when it comes to learning manners. I was surprised because I thought the Count would be more powerful and scary, but you are such a cute boy. Cute? Can I call you Eberhard? Hal is fine. Can I call you Lily? Yeah, sure. Hal's kind of cute. Don't say cute to a guy. It's not so bad when it's said by a relative's aunt, but when it's said by a girl of the same age, six years old. If it's said by an aunt, it's a little depressing. I'd rather have a girl say, you're so cool. It seems that my baby face like my mother's had an unwanted effect on me here. Anyway, I was glad that she was more frank than I expected. I would have been in trouble if she had continued in her distant mode. Well, there's a lot more to show in the garden. I've done some work on it myself. I've been walking around the garden a lot since I was a baby with my mom. And since I've been able to do things on my own, I've built a lot of secret bases in the backyard. No matter how old a man gets, he always loves secret bases and things like that. It's great that I'm a kid now, so I can play like that without hesitation. 
I would love to show Lily the beauty of my secret base, and maybe we can build our own base together. Shall we go? I couldn't help but hold out my hand, as I do when I walk with my sister and brother, my sister is still a baby and can't walk. It's like a date, isn't it? I was so nervous, but I couldn't pull it back now that I had offered my hand, so I made a delicate face and started to stiffen up again with my hand halfway out, a situation I didn't understand. Let's go! Fortunately, for me Lily, who was still a child, holding hands with a man did not seem to be a particularly serious event. She grasped my hand back in a normal way and wrapped her soft hand around mine with the high body temperature characteristic of a child. She's cute. I was a little nervous, even though I was over twenty years old inside. Do I smell like a criminal? It's okay, I'm the same age as you. Chapter 8 Wow! Lily's eyes sparkled as she ran around the flower garden. Although her tongue was lisping in some places, she was able to greet us with a firmness that was frightening for a six-year-old, but it seems that there are parts of her that are appropriate for her age. She looked just like a six-year-old girl as she happily played with nature in a garden full of colorful flowers. She was so cute that I would love to take pictures of her if I had a camera. I'm not a pedophile. But unfortunately, there were no cameras in this era. There is apparently a magic tool called a telephoto camera, which has a camera-like function using magic, but it seems to be terribly expensive, to the extent that even the legitimate son of a great nobleman cannot easily obtain one. They are using to record the historical buildings of the empire, or when important meetings and ceremonies are held, they are taken by photographers who report directly to the imperial family. The few photographs that were taken can only be accessed by going to a reference library like the Imperial Library. It is said that they have letterpress printing technology, but they don't have the technology to do fine and advanced printing like photography, so I guess that's to be expected. Well, what can I do if I don't have a camera? I'll just have to capture it in my mind. If things go on like this, she probably become my wife in the future. It's nice, isn't it? I feel like we're childhood friends. We'll play a lot, and grow up together, happy, worried, sad, and laughing. It's a feeling I couldn't experience in my previous life, and it makes me feel very warm inside. Hey, isn't there anywhere else good to go? Lily, who had been repeatedly rolling around on the lawn beside the flower garden in a manner unbecoming of a duchess, asked me if I had anything more interesting to do, as if she had grown tired of that game. Her expensive white dress is covered in grass and I can't even look at it. She's cute, but she's still a kid. All right, let's go to my secret base. Secret base? It's a secret from adults, Jay, it will be our secret place. What? I don't know what is it, but it sounds fun. Lily came running up to me with the grass stuck in her hair. I shook her hand and walked to the backyard. It's time for me to show my manly wiles. Wow, this is amazing. Did you make this, Hal? Yes, I did. Isn't it amazing? Lily was surprised to see the secret base I had built. In front of me stood a pit dwelling that looked like something out of a history textbook. I worked hard on it for about a year, and I'm proud of it. A pit dwelling. It may not be as stylish as a log cabin or a treehouse. But in terms of convenience and practicality, it's a wonderful place that can't be compared to other. First, convenience. With a treehouse, you don't have to go up and down the trees. Besides, considering that I'm still a kid, I'd probably reject a treehouse because of the danger of falling. Next, practicality. Treehouses and log cabins are very difficult to build. In fact, they didn't appear until much later in human history. On the other hand, the pit dwelling appeared in ancient Japan very early on. And until the Heian period, 794-1185, they were functioning properly as dwellings for farmers. The ease of construction and practicality of the pit dwelling is proven by the history of ancient Japan. And last but not least, let's not forget the romance. This is the most important thing. Log houses are certainly good. If a log house suddenly appeared in the middle of the forest, you could have a fantasy that a witch living in seclusion might be living there. A tree house would also be uplifting, like an athletic activity in a forest park. But that's not good enough. Log houses and tree houses are both houses. They are not secret bases. 
On the other hand, a pit house doesn't feel like a house at all, but it's CAB to withstand practical use. While it was a secret base, considering its livability, practicality, and most importantly, romance, it was an inevitable choice to become a pit house. Why don't you come inside? Yes. I went into the secret base first, and then invited Lily in. Lily looked excited as she walked into the base. It's huge. Right? The pit dwelling I built was a relatively large one, about 5 meters wide and 4 meters high, about the size of a one-room apartment with a high ceiling. It is impervious to rain and wind, so it is quite habitable. In addition, on the bare dirt floor, I laid out a kind of tatami mat made of a goose-like grass. In addition to the fact that I am an ex-Japanese, this is also because this world is not a dirt-foot culture. I don't know much about how the lower classes live, but at least the aristocracy doesn't seem to live with shoes on their feet. I think it's very hygienic. It's so fluffy. Lily said happily as she jumped into the futon made of woven straw. When I first met her, I had an image of her as a young lady, somewhat divine, but now I see that she is indeed a tomboy. But Lily is cute that way. Let's have a snack. Snack? Yes, come on. Then I took out two lango nuts from a jar on the wall. I picked them from the orchard at the edge of the backyard. They are grown by a servant as a hobby, and as long as I pick them every once in a while like this, I am thanked rather than criticized for eating them. Well, I don't think there are many servants who can be angry with the head of the family's heir in the first place. Aside from that, I love the rango berries, having eaten them since I was a baby. The servants work hard to grow them and they taste so sweet, juicy and delicious. They would often serve me lango pie made from them as a snack. Rango nuts? Yes, they are. Yes, from the orchard. Don't you cut them? Lily asked with a curious look. Of course you don't. Normally, a noble woman would not bite into a whole rango. It's bad manners. But right now, I'm the only one who is looking at her. It's okay, just take a bite. I said, and took a big bite of rango as if I was showing her an example. Wow, big mouth. Munch, 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 munch. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, bop. Lily bites into rango with a mischievous look on her face, like she's never eaten such thing before in her life. There was a lot of rango juice on her cheeks, so I took out my handkerchief and wiped it off. As we ate the rango together, I somehow felt like Lily and I were truly getting along. Chapter 9 I made friends with Lily, I was screamed at by Elisa and the Duke's servants when they saw her slightly dirty dress, and I was laughed at by the father and the Duke after the meeting, and was told by Lily, bye. The Duke and the others left after saying a farewell that was far from the ladylike greeting they had given me at first. I went back to the mansion and went to the salon as my father told me to, where he sipped his tea and told me with a relieved expression on his face, the engagement is done. The engagement is now official. Lily is officially your bride from now on. I'm glad. I patted his chest as he said it with a satisfied look on his face. What, you already fell for her? I'm not going to fall in love with her out of the blue, though she I skewed. It's just that she is the daughter of the Duke. It's good that I gotten to know her, but if the engagement goes through, it'll be like it's my fault. What, you're just a kid, why do you care about that? I can't help it, I'm curious. By the way, in the monologue, I use I, but in front of my family, I call myself I. There is such a thing as changing your first name depending on the person you're talking to, isn't there? Anyway, you're going to get married. You're lucky you don't have to worry about your future wife. That's right. I'd be proud to have such cute bride. You should be grateful to me for finding you such a lovely bride. He said jokingly, and I laughed and thanked him. I laughed and thanked him. Well, it was my power that won the girl's heart. That's my boy. You are really charmer. You're praising me too much. Ha ha. I knew that father, who joked around so much, was actually a great man. I asked Elisa and the other servants, my mother, and sometimes him, and I also went through the books in his study to find out more. According to him, he is the strongest of the four generals, also he is a hero who defeated a demon when he was young. He was the commander of the Kingsguard Knights, 
one of the three most powerful divisions in the Empire. And, he is one of only eight S-ranked warriors in the Empire. There is no shortage of anecdotes, but they all seem to be true. He sounds like a hero from a story, but it's strange that this man my own father. I don't feel that way at all. Well, I guess that's why the highest-ranking nobleman like the Duke of Bernstein would willingly ask for an engagement. The people around me, including the big aristocrats, have decided that it would be beneficial for them to have a relationship with a man named Karl Heinz and the Fahrenheit Frontier Count family. I'm going to inherit such a frontier family in the future. I need to be strong so that I won't be laughed at for being my parents' seventh son, and so that I can protect a lovely fiancé like Lily with my own strength. I'm going to train. Now? It's getting dark. Don't worry. I'll be back before dinner. As the eldest son of a frontier family, it's all very well for you to work hard to improve yourself, but don't get too carried away and destroy the garden. It's a big place, but it's still ancestral land. Hmm, well, I'll be careful. What's with the fluffy answer? Well, good luck with that. One of these days, I'm going to give you a lesson. Really? I'll look forward to it. After saying that, I headed for the backyard. The backyard of my house is huge. From the woods where my secret base is located, to the small orchard of Oka, to the densely forested mountains, all of it is within the grounds of the Fahrenheit Frontier family. The one I'm going to now is one of the mountains I often go to when I'm doing my training. It's the mountain behind the house where Elisa told me not to make a hole in the garden. It's my own training ground where I've been training for the past few years. Eight spoke asterisk. It's a small mountain about 100 meters above sea level, about a kilometer from the Fahrenheit residence in the direction of the backyard. It's a small mountain, about 100 meters high, and it's as unique as you'll find in the mountains of rural Japan, but it's a mountain that I'm more attached to than any other. There's a beast path that leads from the sparsely wooded area at the foot of the mountain to the mountainside. Although I call it a beast, the person who created this path is none other than myself. I followed the beast path until I came to a point slightly above the mountainside. There, I found an open space about the size of an elementary school gym. What was unique about it was that there were countless holes in the ground, trees, cliffs, rocks, and everywhere. Some of the holes are tens of centimeters in diameter, while others are several meters in length. These holes were the product of my four years of training, and they were proof of my strength. Let's do one more set today. I took a deep breath and calmed my mind. The next moment, I jumped. With a thud, the ground I was standing on gouged out. I jumped several meters at once, and instead of dropping my feet to the ground, I stepped on a tree branch along the way and jumped again. I jumped through the trees, gouged the ground, ran up the cliff, jumped over the big rocks, and climbed up the mountain. In less than a few seconds, I was running like a ninja up a steep slope that was clearly not suitable for climbing. That's it. A few minutes later, I'm back at the starting point. My sweat is just a little blotchy, and my breathing is undisturbed. I've been doing this for a while now. I started this training at the beginning of the year before last, when I was allowed to go out freely. At that time, it took me a whole day to go around the mountain until nightfall, so I've grown up quite a bit. By the way, at the age of six, my physical ability is 42. Compared to my magic power of 23,298, which is a ridiculous number, it's a very ordinary and insignificant number. It's probably not that different from other six-year-olds. So why was I able to perform such a superhuman movement? It's not that the six-year-olds of this world are superhuman or anything. This is one of the results of my four years of training. I'll be back. I shake my fist. More than ten meters away from the cliff, a number of holes, ranging from several tens of centimeters to a meter in size, appeared. Okay, it's becoming less difficult to fire a series of shocks. The accuracy of the hits is perfect. Yes, the magic that allowed me to accelerate explosively, jump and bounce, and punch holes in remote places is my unique skill, shock. I've been learning the tricks of the trade from my mom and I've come to be able to use this particular magic, shock, in addition to the regular non-attribute magic from the magical compendium. The effect of shock is quite simple. It generates a physical or magical shock from my body at a desired strength and timing. 
it does not require a magic circle, runes, or chanting like other magic to activate. All I need to do is just think of it as I would move my arms or legs. Now, I can handle shock as naturally as I can move my arms and legs, but when I first started using magic, it was hard. It's like driving a bicycle with the left and right handlebars reversed. If I was not careful, my power would explode and I would get injured. Since I was still small, my mother was very worried about me, and she would get angry with me many times. In the end, no matter how many times I told her, she wouldn't stop practicing, so she started to watch me all the time. Thanks to her, it took me a little over two years to finally master the basics of magic. Since then, I've been coming to this backwoods mountain to practice increasing the accuracy and power of my magic. I have so much magic power that I can't use it all, so when I don't have anything to do, I practice all the time. Unlike when I was living on earth, I can feel that the more effort I put into it, the more it becomes my ability, and I am really enjoying my daily training. However, I'm starting to get a little bored with the monotony of everyday life. It's time for a change. I've never been allowed to leave the grounds of my house, but now that I'm six years old, I'm going to ask my dad if I can go outside of the grounds. I want to expand my world. Chapter 10 One afternoon, a long, quiet breeze was blowing. I was why my father in the training area of our house. I have a vague idea of what kind of training you do in the mountains behind our house, and I know that you're unusually strong for a six-year-old. But I'm not gonna lose. Come at me with all you got. You're not getting any younger, so don't get hurt. You're right. I'm 29. I'm only six. Ha ha. So much for laughter. The next moment, a tense air. Float around us. What we were doing now was martial arts training as part of my noble education. The Fahrenheit family is a military aristocracy family that is responsible for the defense of the northern part of the empire as a northern general. As the future head of the family, I also need to be skilled in martial arts. That's why I'm training. Come. My father urges me. I'll borrow from his technology, not as his son, but as his only disciple. Ha! I generate a shock in the sole of my foot and approach my father with explosive acceleration. However, he also dodges with his superhuman physical ability and throws a counter-attack with his wooden sword that held in both hands. In order to dodge it, I release a shockwave from my left palm, forcibly change my stance, and then turn around and swing the wooden sword in my right hand as if I were reaping off his feet. Not bad. Seeing this, the father shouted in admiration, but by stepping on my wooden sword with his right foot, he was able to catch the attack without difficulty and swung the wooden sword down in one stroke from the upper stance. Ah! I immediately let go of the wooden sword I was holding and used the recoil of the shockwave from my left hand and both feet to distance myself from my father's attack. Hmm. He calmly readjusts his wooden sword and cuts off all the impact bullets that hit him. Oh my god. No matter how strong he was, I didn't think that he would be able to slice through the impact bullet with a wooden sword. I'm at the gap after the attack and fired at the fastest speed I could. As long as this didn't work, I probably wouldn't be able to defeat him with the shock bombs no matter how many time ish it. Nice move. He said, but he was not happy at all. I couldn't get him even a scratch. This was no good at all. Losing my wooden sword, I thought about what I could do with my bare hands. Impact bullets are no good. If I really try to shoot them, I will end up getting cut. Close combat is no good either. The non-attribute magic I use, body strengthening, is no match for my father's extraordinary physical abilities. In the first place, my non-attribute magic is not enough to damage him. After all, the only way to deal an effective blow is with my own magic, shock. What should I do? How to use, shock. The point is that I can't be cut, you I can't be avoided, and I can only be, shock, from a short distance. Then how about this? After finishing my strategy, I faced father who was waiting for me in a disciplined manner and put my hand on the ground. The plan was to shake the ground. Good idea. But it won't matter if he will move faster than that. If the ground is going to be shaken, then let's attack it before it shakes. It's a brainy idea, 
but just thinking about the over-specified physical ability to carry it out is terrifying. But this time, that brain power was to my detriment. I am a child in appearance, but an adult in brain. I w l l be a great soldier, Eberhard. Father is rushing at me at a speed that I can't even see. Of course, I can't avoid him. But as I watch him, I smile at him. The next moment, he seemed to notice something. A look of impatience crosses his face. But it's too late. He can't stop at that speed. I let go of my hand that was on the ground and set it in front of me. And then I converted the magic that I had developed beforehand into a unique magic and shot it out with all my might. Oh, oh, oh. Jeez. I could hear my father's muffled voice. But the voice was soon blown away into the distance. There was a great cloud of dust. I released a weak shockwave to dispel the dust cloud, leaving a ten-meter-long scar in front of me that looked like the ground had been gouged out. I've won. I declare victory. Looks like I won. But as soon as the smoke cleared, I saw a completely unharmed father emerge from dozens of meters away, and I felt like crap. I thought to myself, well, that's a good idea. I were bluffing when I tried to shake the ground. You're unharmed. Well, I can't lose to my son yet, but I'm going to let you win. In fact, if it hadn't been for me, you would have been mortally wounded. Hm, I don't think I won at all. No, I'm rather amazed that you fought this long without using any body-enhancing magic. Are you really six years old? You're getting stronger. Before I knew it, he was right in front of me, patting my head. I'm not sure if I'm happy, frustrated, or embarrassed, but I can't help but make an impatient face. Maybe we don't have to worry about you anymore. What do you mean? Father smiled and said. You've been saying you want to get outside the property, haven't you? Did you mean that? Yes. If you are this strong, there is no need to worry. You will be allowed to go out freely only within the territory of the county of Fahrenheit. Yay! But don't go to other territories by mistake. I don't care if you're a noble person, if the heir to a noble family enters another territory without permission, it could cause trouble between the families. I understand. I know that. Besides, our territory is huge, so I don't have to go that far to enjoy it. You don't have to go that far. Just let me know in advance if you'll be late. Yes, I know. The conversation ended there, and the old man looked around the training area. But, well, here a lot of destruction. Yeah, well. It's not a garden, it's a training ground, and I wasn't told not to destroy it, so I did it to my heart's content and this is what I ended up with. The old man put his hands on the ground and chanted a spell. The ground of the training ground, which had been battered with holes until a few moments ago, quickly returned to its original clean state. Training ground, which had just been battered by holes, quickly returned to its original state. This is the first time I've seen my dad use attribute magic. My mother is usually in charge of magic, so I assumed that my father was a brainy soldier who only fought with bullets. Well, even with earth magic, Teresa uses it better than me. Mother magic is amazing. A fresh green saint who supports a fearless northern general. My mother, Teresa Sally von Flensburg Fahrenheit, is a well-known A-plus ranked magician in the Empire. Although she is not S rank because it is not very suitable for battle, the rumors of a saint who manipulates the two attributes of earth and water, and even the life magic derived from earth and water as a unique magic, are set with the heroic story of the Northern General. It was famous among the people of the Empire. It is a rare attribute that only those with an aptitude for the two attributes of water and earth can manifest as a unique magic. It can not only heal the injured and sick, but also heal the tired, strengthen the healthy, and even give power to plants and animals. My mother, Teresa, was known as the Saint of Fresh Green because she assisted her allies in battle by encouraging the growth of plants, making restorative medicines, and playing with the enemy. Incidentally, Mewfather's nickname was War Demon. His father's nickname was War Demon, which sounds awfully cool, but I guess you could say that his father had no equal in close combat. When he was young, he was famous throughout the Imperial Army as a party of two, the War Demon and the New Green Saint. In this mock battle, I strongly realized that I was not ready yet. 
Even though I'm superior in terms of magic power, I'm no match for them in actual combat. I want to surpass them someday, and become someone worthy of the name Northern General, someone who can protect my family, including Lily. Now that I've gotten permission to go outside the grounds, I'm going to head out to the castle town tomorrow. I want to see the big world, learn more about it, and become stronger. Chapter 11 It was the next day when my father gave me permission to go out. I was standing at the front door, dressed in a common clothes made of hemp, I was stranded at the door. Did you forget anything? Do you have your wallet? Do you have enough magic power? It's just a short walk to the city, so if I forget anything, I'll come back for it. If I forget your wallet, I'll come back for it. It's not like I will fighting in the city, so you don't need to worry about my magic. I know you're strong, Hal. But I'm worried about you. Should I come along with you? It has already been about thirty minutes since I stood in the doorway. I'm glad you're worried about me, but I would lie to go alone. Don't worry, Teresa, Hal's a lot more grown up than we thought. And if he will get into some trouble, it's just another experience of failure that he needs to grow up. As long as we don't have to worry about him getting hurt or kidnapped, we should just smile and send him on his way. Nice dad. Keep up the good work and give me some cover fire. Is that so? I'm kind of sad that you're going away from me. You're overreacting. I just going to the castle town. Hal, this is the first time you've seen the outside world, T, and unknown people that you've never met before. Seeing the people of the city differently than the nobles and merchants is a way to learn for your future. Now is my chance. I'm off. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, wait. Hal, be careful. Yes. I reply as I run towards the gate. The only time I've been out of this gate was about half a year ago, when my father took me to the shrine to say hello. Aside from that, I've never left the grounds of the castle of the Fahrenheit family, so today is the first day I'm taking my first steps into the world. It's like a second birthday for me. Oh, my dear boy. How unusual. Are you going out? As I walked up to the gate, the gatekeeper, who was also a servant in our house, spoke to me. He doesn't usually talk to me, so it's refreshing. Yes. My father has finally given me permission to go out. I'll try to be home by dinner. I see. There are patrolmen patrolling the streets, so I'm sure the streets of Heidberg are quite safe, but please be careful. Thank you. I thanked the gatekeeper and stepped out of the gate. I remembered the excitement I had felt as a child when I was still in Japan. I felt this way then, as well. The sky was blue and the sun was bright, just like now. Even though I had left the gate, the castle town did not immediately spread out. The Fahrenheit family's mansion is not a mountain castle, but it is not a mansion in the middle of a city. Think of Heonkyo. The city is spread out in a grid pattern, and the inner palace, where the emperor resides, is located on the northernmost side. Heidberg, the capital of the Fahrenheit frontier counties, also had a similar structure, although it was not a strictly grid-like city. That's why I had to walk for a while after leaving the mansion to reach the city. Or, to put it another way, if I could reach the Lord's Mansion right from the city, it would be a very bad situation in terms of security. The security system of our house is twofold, the inner gate and the outer gate. I strolled along the path leading from the inner gate to the outer gate. There is no one around me. I arrive at the outer gate. I go to the door by the gate and open it from the inside. Young master? The gatekeeper calls out to me again. This time there were two of them. I've been given permission to go out. I'll be back in the evening. Oh, I see. Take care. Take care. The gatekeepers saw me off and I stepped into the city. In front of me was a beautiful city that looked like middle modern Europe. Oh. Beautiful five-story stone buildings lined up in a straight line as if they were in an orderly fashion. The road was wide, like the main road in a modern Japanese city center. Horse-drawn carriages and people were moving left and right along the road, going in any direction they wanted. It was another world. It was an impressive sight. Some of the carriages were pulled by huge lizard-like dragons. I wonder if they call it a dragon carriage. It's awesome. Most of the people walking around seemed to be normal people, 
but every once in a while I would see people wearing beast ears that were clearly not cosplay. Apparently there are beastmans in this world. I was shocked to learn this for the first time at the age of six. At this rate, there might be elves and dwarves, too. I left the Fahrenheit family area and headed straight along the main road, which was as thick as Suzaku Boulevard in Heian-kyo or the champ Elysees in Paris. Apparently, there are many public buildings in this area, such as government offices and libraries, probably because of the proximity of the Lord's Mansion. Many of the buildings we saw were very stylish and seemed to be of a high social class. I guess I don't have to worry about the safety of this area. After a while, the streets gradually become more crowded and lively. If the area I was in before was like Ginza or Marinucci, this area is more like Shinjuku or Shibuya. The buildings are still tall, but they look more like high-rise apartments than office buildings. The first floor of each building is occupied by stores, and you can see many people coming and going. Welcome! We've got fresh meat from today. Freshly baked bread. How about some exotic spices? Exotic spices. Buy it and you won't regret. I turned a corner and came to a narrow alleyway. The alleyway was lined with stalls and looked like a marketplace. The density of the population jumped, and I walked down the street, careful not to bump into any passers by. It reminded me of Amyoko in my previous life, where a huge number of people were walking in the narrow streets, and the old men were shouting and advertising their products. The world may be different but there are still similar scenes. Hey, kid. Would you like some skewers? What? As I was walking, I was talked to by an old man who was cooking some kind of meat skewers. It was cooking nicely and smelled very delicious. How much? 150 L's a stick. Can I have two? 300 L's, please. I take out three 100 EL coppers from my pocket. Thank you. I walked down the market street, munching on the skewered meat I had received. The meat was crispy on the surface and well done in the middle, but still juicy and, to put it mildly, excellent. The sauce was not soy sauce based, but it had an addictive flavor like exotic spices, and as someone who usually eats good food, I had no complaints about its quality. A six-year-old stomach would be full in no time after eating two skewers of grilled meat. As I strolled along the street, Going this way and that way to rest our stomach after the meal, I came to a noisy section of the street, even though there were few people walking around. There were only a few people walking on the street, but there was a lot of shouting and metal clanging. The noise was coming from the houses that lined both sides of the street. It seemed that this was the area where the forgers lived. I was curious, so I peeked in through the open door and saw a group of muscular men, sweat pouring down like a waterfall, swinging hammers at the glowing red iron is so cool. As I was admiring the craftsmanship, I was tapped on the shoulder from behind with a thump. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I interrupt you? I turned around apologizing and saw a girl about my age standing there. She was about my age, with red hair and skin that was probably dulled by soot. Do you have any interest in blacksmith? In blacksmith? Yes, well, not that I was, but I would like to see more of it. The girl smiled and grabbed my hand. Then come this way. Wait, what? I was suddenly taken away. Well, it doesn't look like a kidnapping, and this girl seems to be related to a forging shop. If they want to show me where she work, I'm fine with it. It seems that my wish to expand world is already coming true on the first day. Chapter 12 Excuse me for disturbing you. The girl took me to a place that had a distinct presence in the workshop. There were several smiths inside, all wielding their hammers with great power. The girl spoke to one of them, who seemed to be the master. Mister. Can I watch how do your work with him? What, a friend? Yes. But be careful and watch from a distance. Thank you. The master, the girl's father, was a very stocky man. He had muscles, a bushy beard, and above all, he was quite short for an adult male. The master seemed to be a dwarf. Does that mean this child is also a dwarf? It's hard to tell the difference when you're a child, let alone an adult. Also, if you look closely, you can see that more than half of the forgers working there are dwarves. It seems to be the workshop of the dwarves. I wonder if the human smiths are their apprentices. 
Gun, gun, gun. While making a high-pitched sound, the smiths repeatedly raised their hammers and struck them, and then raised them and struck them again. Each time they hit, the shape of the bright red iron changed little by little. It's beautiful, isn't it? Ha! Huh. The girl spoke to me as she watched the forging. I want to be able to forge like that in the future. I'm sure you will be able to do it. It is not unfounded. I will. Yes, you will. You've always wanted to do it, right? Then why shouldn't you try? Continuity is power. Even if you don't have any specific skills, it won't change that. Of course, there are individual differences in how well you can do it. I'm looking forward to. I'd like to try it myself soon. She was happy to be told that S. he could do it, but she was a little worried. I'm sure it's because she never actually been allowed to forge anything yet. If that's the case, why don't you actually try it? If it's dangerous, just watch him carefully. If it's too dangerous for you to do it alone, you can ask your father to watch you. Well, won't he be mad? I don't care if he gets mad. You want to do it, right? That's true. Let's give it a try. As soon as she said that, the girl walked up to her father. I told you to stay away from me. Dad, I want to do it too. What? I don't think you're ready for this. I want to try it, too. Please teach me. The father was silent for a while as the girl looked serious. A tense air flows between the two. And after a few tens of seconds, it was the father who lost his patience first. You can't blame him. Well, it was the same with me. I was yelling at my dad every time he went to work, and he was yelling at me every time. Okay, I'll see you when this is over. So for now, take a step back and take a good look at my work. Thank you. Apparently, I got permission to try my hand at forging without incident. Eight spoke asterisk. No, that's not it. You have to hit with more force. Faster. That'll cool down the iron. Yes, master. Do it again. You see, forging is a battle of time and energy. You said you wanted to do it, so don't be discouraged. After that, the sword that the master was working on was finished, and the master was now teaching the girl how to forge. I'm watching from the side. He seems to be leaving the work to the other craftsmen. I wonder if that will keep the workshop running. The girl is drenched in sweat, desperately wielding a mallet under the Spartan guidance of her master. She's still very young, and even though the dwarves have an aptitude for forging, it seems very difficult for her to suddenly hammer iron. Still, her expression was very lively, unlike when I was watching him from the side. Great, a young man with a dream. After hours of heating the iron and beating it, tea, it was finally time to soak the iron in water as instructed by the master. I finally grabbed the beaten lump of iron with my scissors and dipped it into the cold water. With a sizzling sound, the iron was cooled down at once. After repeating the process several times, the girl held the iron, which was finally at a temperature that she could grasp with her hands, and fell in love with it for a while. It was the first time she had forged something by herself. She must have been very impressed. Oh, don't dawdle. The next step is to file it. If you don't polish it, it won't become a blade. Yes. The girl replied hurriedly and ran to the place where the grinding stone was kept. Then the master taught her how to file, mixed with reprimands, and after hours of work, when the sun was about to set, her voice finally rose. Finally, just as the sun was about to set, the she aid, it's done. Chapter 13 It's done! Apparently, it was finished. For the first time in her life, a girl has forged her own blade. Congratulations! Well, that's pretty good for a first time. You'll be making the same thing every day from now on, so you'd better remember how it feels. Yes. It was already dimly lit. There was almost no daylight in the workshop, so the fire of the furnace was vaguely visible in the darkness. In the midst of all this, the finished product in the girl's hand a knife with a blade about 20 centimeters long reflected the slight sunlight and shone silver. Is beautiful. The girl muttered. I felt exactly the same way. Oh. I'm sorry I made you spend the whole day with me after all. I'm sorry for my daughter's sake. 
the master approached and spoke to me. He seems to be more friendly than I expected. No, it's nothing. I'm the one who insisted on seeing it. I'm sorry to bother you so suddenly. Don't worry about it. You gave my daughter a push. You're welcome to join us, but we can't ignore you. That's right, that is a thanks, you can pick any weapon you want and bring it with you. Oh, you don't mind? It's for sale. The ones we have here are not that expensive. The expensive ones are basically custom made. If it's ready made, it won't cost you much. Don't hesitate to take it. Well, I'll take your word for it. I pointed to a throwing knife with a blade of about 5 centimeters that was displayed on a shelf by the wall. Can I have some of these? Are you sure that's enough? There are more magnificent swords and such. The master asked me with a look as if he thought a boy would choose something like that. It's not that I don't want a sword or something, but with my current muscle strength, I just can't hold it. No, I like this one. It seems to work pretty well. I see. I've got a lot in stock in the back, so I'll give you about twenty of them for now. Oh, you'll give me that many? What, you don't want it? No, thank you very much. Thank you, I'll use them to practice my magic. I've just recently come up with a new way to apply magic, although it's still in the conceptual stage. While the master and I were making such a deal, I must have come to my senses. A girl walks up to me. She was very dirty with soot and sweat, but her face was radiant and beautiful. Thank you for today, she said. Thanks to you, I was able to take a step forward. I didn't do anything. You did it on your own. No, I still want to do it. The girl then holds out the knife in her hand to me. You did a beautiful job. I want you to take this. You want me to take this? Are you sure? It's the first thing you ever made. Without you, this knife would never have come into this world. That's why I want you to have this knife. The girl who told me this seemed to be very nervous. I think she is thinking that I might not accept it. If that's the case, I'll take it gratefully. Thank you very much. As soon as I said I would take it, the girl's face broke into a very happy smile. I'm going to take good care of this knife. And speaking of which, what's your name? My name is Eberhard. Remembering that I hadn't heard the girl's name yet, I introduced myself. The girl seemed to have forgotten her name as well, and introduced herself in a panic. I'm Mayor, Mayor Arendel. So you're Mayor. Can I call you May? When I asked her, she turned red and started to get flustered. Is a nickname, I've been given a nickname. Her panic is amazing. This girl may have never had a friend before, just like me. May? It's fine if you call me May. I'm, too. You can call me Hal. Okay, then. Hal. It was the first time for her to call her friends by their nicknames, and her first reaction was adorable. Even though their first impressions are opposite, their actual personalities are like this. Oh, will you come again tomorrow? Of course. I'll be here tomorrow and the day after. We have a big yard so you can run around all you want. You have a garden? You're rich, aren't you? Do you think so? Maybe so, ha ha. Watch out. I was about to be exposed as a sneak peek. I think that once I invite her, on my own, but if they find out my identity before I invite her, she might not come to my house. I want to be as sure as possible that I've got a friend who's important to me. Lily lives in the dukedom, and it's hard to lose a friend in the dukedom that I can hang out with frequently. The master gave me a lot of throwing knives, and together with May's work, I had to take a lot of metal home with me. May and the master saw me off, and I walked home through the city after, shuffling my clothes and bag. When I returned home, my mother asked me where I got the large number of knives, and when I told her that I had befriended the daughter of a forger, I replied. I told her that I had made friends with the daughter of a forger. I thought there was something a little off about that. Chapter 14 I'm going to go out into the city as soon as possible today. I have an appointment with May, and more importantly, I don't know anything about the city yet. Here's my plan for today. First, I'm going to train at home in the morning. I need to train with my father, and study with my tutor to become more educated. In the afternoon, I went to the castle town. 
just as I receive my education as a nobleman in the morning, may also trains as a forger in the morning. Neither of us can spend the whole day playing. Today, I'm thinking of having May show me around the city in various ways. I've never been out of the house until yesterday, and I figured May would know more about the city than I do. Well, it's only a guide for a six-year-old, so it's going to be more like a first-time excursion. Anyway, I'm busy in the morning anyway, so I'd like to finish my training quickly and enjoy my plans in the afternoon. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa, you're motivated. You want to show off for the girls? There are no girls here. No matter how many times I hit him, he would either duck or pass me off, or he would catch me and not move an inch. I can't seem to get the image of defeating my father. What's going on here? Is he really human? What I'm doing right now is practicing swordsmanship with my dad. It's not like the mock battle we had a few days ago, where anything goes, but we're training in the Hokusho Bushin Ryu, a martial art passed down from generation to generation in the Fahrenheit family. There are two types of Hokusho Bushin Ryu, Omote and Yura. For now, the main focus is on basic auxiliary magic such as kata, body movements, and body strengthening. There's no documentation on the backside, and my father won't tell me about it. I guess I'm not ready for that yet. I secretly believe that the secret of my father's extraordinary strength lies in the back. Aside from that, the training of the North Shogun Bushin Ryu is extremely harsh, even on the front. I have to be able to see through the movements of my father, who attacks me without pausing for breath, and somehow counterattack, while imitating his movements. The training in my family is in the form of actual combat. He don't teach you the kata movements in detail. The basic policy is to let the body learn them in battle. Of course, he can give me advice during the fight, though. Don't waste your breath. It drains your strength. While easily fending off a series of thrusts from me, Father twists my wooden sword in a mysterious motion that makes it jiggle. I'm not sure how you did that. Damn it. My wooden sword was entangled, so I was left with my bare hands. However, Hokusho Bushin Ryu is a comprehensive martial art with many variations. In addition to swordsmanship and magic sword techniques, it also supports archery and karate. SHH this is a Bujin Ryu technique in which the user applies a non-attribute magic body strengthening to himself, accelerates his arm with another non-attribute magic telekinetic force, and strikes his fist with no motion. This is the technique that I'm best at among the Bujin Ryu attack techniques. It's not that difficult as long as you have good control over your magic, and for me it's been pretty easy since I was born and have spent all my time controlling my magic. In other words, if you don't have control over your magic, it's very difficult to learn. So, although there are similar techniques in the general public, the popularity of these techniques is not that high. In other tournaments, it is feared that it is difficult to kill someone at first sight. However, this is only the case in other tournaments. It's a different story if you're going against a master or a disciple. It's a technique that can catch you off guard or be used in conjunction with a feint. If you use it too often, you will be countered. The master of the game, my father, who I'm proud to say has a high level of skill, easily accepted my Shun Matataki, and then returned it with another Shun Matataki. In addition, as if to punish me for losing my stance due to the return of the moment, he uses a derivative of the non-attribute magic telekinesis, fixation, to immobilize the opponent in the air, and then strikes the opponent with the technique crucifixion, which strikes the opponent with all the energy of the blow. There is no mercy. Barrier. There is no such technique as a barrier. It's a non-attribute magic with a difficulty level of C that creates a magical barrier to protect you from enemy attacks. That's just what I call it. It's funny because the whole barrier thing sounds like something out of elementary school. It's even more fun because I can actually put up a barrier. Doggone it. A sound that shouldn't come from a six-year-old, and I'm blown away. No matter how much I put up the barrier and strengthen my body, I'm still in danger. There is only one rule for this training. The only rule for this training is, use only the techniques of the Northern Shogun Bushinryu. If you use techniques other than those of the Bushinryu, you may be able to train in combat, but you will not be able to train in the Bushinryu. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. I think it will be a better if, shock, can be used but I understand the importance of the Taikshin style, so I won't whine. 
In fact, the father who has mastered the Taekshin style is stronger than the shock. Ouch. Hmm, I attacked it with some seriousness, but you only grazed it. Nice work. In the event that you have any kind of questions concerning where and how to use the internet, you can contact us at the website. It's a good idea to take a look at the actual information on the web. However, I'm confident that I'm getting stronger little by little every day, so I won't lose my motivation. It's a far cry from my previous life, when no matter how hard I tried, I was rarely rewarded. It's almost lunchtime. Let's head out. The battle was over, so the father said and relaxed his stance. At the same time, the tense air relaxed, and I fell to the ground with a thud. I fell to the ground with a thud. Don't whine. And even though there's a big difference now, you're definitely stronger than I was when I was in your age. Eberhard, you're going to be much better than me. Well, I don't know. I'm your father, so I'm sure of it. You're a genius at hard work. You are a genius in hard work. I have never heard such a happy word. I can feel that what was not rewarded in my previous life is being rewarded in this life. I'm not sure I'm ready for this. It's not just the first time you see it encountered. Gosh, don't expect that much from a six-year-old. You're saying that because you're too strong to be considered a six-year-old. The old man said that, but his expression was quite cheerful. He must be happy that his son is so promising. In his previous life, he had never been expected by his parents, so he felt a little embarrassed. Now that I'm home and sweating it out in the bath, I'm going to have lunch. You going out this afternoon, aren't you? Let's get going. Yeah. Taking a bath with my father was also quite fun. Men need to get to know each other naked, don't they? Eight spoke asterisk. After taking a bath and finishing lunch, I finished getting ready and left the house. My wallet, bag, fountain pen, paper, the knife me gave me, and a throwing knife for emergencies. Of course, I didn't forget my old cotton clothes to disguise myself as a commoner. Today, May and I are going to take a walk around the city. For a child of this age, every day is an adventure. Chapter 15 I left the house as I did yesterday, walked through the central district with its many public facilities, and then through the commercial district toward Kajia Cho. I don't forget to buy some spicy grilled meat skewers on the way. What was different from yesterday was that I bought one more skewer as a souvenir for May. The owner remembered that I had come here two days in a row and added a little more meat. As I approached the area of craftsmen's, the crowd had settled down to a certain extent, and there were more workshops, weapon stores, and armor shops. The percentage of merchants and ordinary people walking around was decreasing, and the number of adventurers, soldiers, and other combatants was increasing. On the other hand, the atmosphere is not unsafe. This is probably due to the fact that there are many demons in the remote areas. First of all, in a remote area, weapons with halfway decent performance cannot compete with dangerous demons, so the standard of weapons required will increase. As a result, the quality of the smiths will also increase. This inevitably leads to higher prices for weapons, which makes it harder for hoodlums who want to worsen public safety to get their hands on them. A rogue cannot be an adventurer. All the adventurers in this town are professional adventurers who take pride in their job. As I walked along, I saw a building with a sign that said Arendel Workshop. From the outside, I could see that most of the buildings in this area had workshops and houses attached to each other. May's house was also a two-story building, with the workshop on the first floor and the living space on the second floor. May? I've come to visit. When I arrived in front of the workshop, I called out through the open door into the house. It was a little late, but it was lunchtime, and there was none of the noise characteristic of a forge. It's a very quiet time of the day for an area like that, which is usually very noisy with metal sounds. Oh, Hal. May, hi. I heard a voice from above and looked up to see May peeking out of the second floor window. The second floor seemed to be a living space after all. I'm coming. As soon as she said that, May immediately retreated into the window and came down to the first floor with a clattering sound. As I waited for about ten seconds, May came from the back of the room and poked her head out of the doorway. Hello, Hal. Hello. Have you eaten lunch yet? I just had some. 
I bought these skewers because they were delicious. Is this Rumia beef from Rumia? Rumia beef? I know about Rumia beef. I'm sure you'll be able to understand why. The reason why I use the word cow-like is because technically it is not a cow. If it had iron horns on its head, it wouldn't be called a cow. Above all, Lumia cows are oviparous. It looks like a mammal and it produces milk, but I don't get it. It's like a platypus. Aside from that, they are not as violent as demons, and in some places they are even bred. The quality of the milk and meat is very high and it can be obtained inexpensively, so Rumia beef is one of the specialties of our frontier territory, widely eaten by nobles and commoners alike. Oh, so this meat is Rumia beef? Rumia beef goes well with everything. This spice is also sold in the market. Yes, that's right. I like Rumia beef too. Even though it's obviously not biologically a cow, it tastes just like a cow, and it's a popular meat. Sometimes I don't understand the food culture of this world, but as long as it tastes good, it's enough. That's what I've been trying to tell myself lately, otherwise I won't be able to live in this world where demons roam. I'll have another skewer, too. I decide to take out another skewer and eat it with her. After enjoying the meal at the materials yard in front of the workshop, we decided to start our activities. Well, today I'd like to have me show me around the city. What? How you don't live I any city, dot. It was a perfectly legitimate question. However, since I can't reveal my identity, I have to cheat as long as I'm not lying. No, actually, I can't go out very often due to family business. The other day I finally got permission to go out freely, so I'm out playing like this. What a strange family you live in. Yes. Hmm, even though I don't mean to offend her, I don't feel comfortable cheating her too much. So, I don't know anything about this town yet. Do you have any recommended spots? Well, I guess so. Well, let's go to the Central Square. Central Square. There are trees there. Trees? I have a lot of trees growing on my property. But I'll have to go there to find out what this town square is like. There might be a fun event or something. Eight spoke asterisk. So this is the Central Square. It's quite beautiful. Hmm. May looked at me with a smug expression on her face. I can't help but understand her feelings. It was the central square of the city, and it had an atmosphere that lived up to its name. First of all, there was a fountain in the center of the square, with benches surrounding the fountain. The benches were not large, but there were trees growing between them. The benches were occupied by a variety of people, from couples to families middle-aged merchants and adventurers. Within a few dozen meters of the benches, brick tiles were laid in concentric circles, and the perimeter of the circle was lined with stores selling food and daily necessities. From the central plaza, roads radiate out in various directions, leading to apartment buildings and stores. The outer perimeter of the central square seemed to function like a traffic circle, with horse-drawn carriages and shoppers constantly walking by. Ah, I see. The Arc de Triomphe. The image was similar to the Arc de Triomphe de la Toile in Paris. With a fountain in place of the Arc de Triomphe. However, it's not that magnificent. The scale is much smaller than the Arc de Triomphe, and the population of this city is probably not as large as Paris. The at most around 100,000, and it seems to be a provincial city. What is it? Ah oh, no, it's nothing. I'm just talking to myself. Let's go into that store. I'm just curious. There was no way I could get through to her about my past life. I changed the subject and turned my attention to the general store in front of me. From the outside, it looks like an antique store, and it looks like a very fun place. It looks like an antique shop from the outside. It's so cute. Right? Even though she is aiming to become a forger, May is still a girl. She seems to have an eye for cute things. We went into the store, which had few customers at lunchtime, and decided to look around. The store was not that big, at best it was the size of a used bookstore in the local shopping district. It was much smaller than a convenience store. Welcome. There was only one clerk, a young lady. I thought the store was too small to have many products, but it seemed to have a lot of products. It's not like the pressurized display of a supermarket, 
but I was a little worried that I might break something by bumping into the crammed products. These are cute, aren't they? Which one? May showed me a hair ornament in the shape of a snowflake. The price was about 1,000 L's. The price was about 1,000 L's, which was a bit steep for a six-year-old. Well, I'll be patient. May looked a little sad as she put the hair ornament back on the shelf. While May was looking at other items, I secretly picked up the hair ornament. Excuse me, can I have this? I hid it behind the items I wanted and finished the bill without May knowing. The total will be 2,500 L's. Yes. As I put the items in the bag and picked them up, the saleswoman spoke to me quietly. A gift for her? That's great. Ha ha. I was a little embarrassed, so I smiled to cover it up and left the store with May. We sat down side by side on the bench in front of the fountain where we had been until a while ago. What did you buy? This. What I took out of the bag was a pouch that could be worn around the waist. It was just the right size to hold a throwing knife or a notepad. The design wasn't bad either. Oh. It's really cool. It's a good fit for you. May praised me when she saw me with the pouch wrapped around my waist. T hank you. I got a good one. I'll give this to May. What? I took out another small bag from my shopping bag and handed it to May. It's a great way to make sure you're getting the most out of your money. This is. From before. You said it was cute. Are you sure you want to do this? It's my way of thanking you for showing me around town. I can say that it's a nobleman's indulgence that I didn't earn myself, that I just bought it with my allowance. But if she happy with the gift, it's not a waste of money. I'm sure you'll be happy to hear that. Oh, no, wait, in the city. She was so overcome with emotion that May just hugged me. The people around us were looking at us with a bit of pain. The lady who worked at the store earlier was also looking at us from inside the store with a smirk on her face. Damn it, don't look at me. In the end, May didn't leave me until the end, so I walked hand in hand with her throughout the rest of the city tour. I don't know whether to be happy about the greatest popularity in my life or to resent it because it was embarrassing. Well, she looked happy, so I was happy too. Chapter 16 It was the day of my first day of work. After finishing breakfast and the assignment my tutor had given me, I was packing my throwing knives and recovery potions into the pouch I bought yesterday. Today, I'm planning to head to the Camras Plains, which stretches around the center of the Fahrenheit Frontier Counties. I'm making preparations for that. The Camras Plains it is a large plain that stretches from the foothills of the Great Northern Mountain Range, including the city of Heidberg, to the neighboring territory of the Duke of Bernstein. There are a few mountains and small hills that can be seen, but basically it is one of the most important breadbasket areas in the empire, with endless grasslands and wheat fields. In addition to wheat fields, various vegetable fields and cattle breeding also thrive in the area, making it an important land that supports the food situation of the empire. I guess it's like Hokkaido in Japan. Hearing this much, one would tend to think that the Camras Plains is a very safe place, but in reality is quite the opposite. The Camras Plains is one of the most dangerous areas in the Imperial Kingdom, aside from the three most difficult areas, the Demon Forest, the Great Mountains, and the Great Labyrinth. The first thing to say about the danger is that it is cold. Of course it is. Even in the vast imperial kingdom, the winters in the Fahrenheit frontier counties, located in the north and inland, are cold anyway. The summers are cool and easy to live in, but the winters are hell unless you wear heavy clothes. And there are many demons. There are several reasons for this, but the first one is that the land is rich. If the land is rich, there will naturally be plenty of crops to harvest. And it is not only humans who eat the crops. Wild beasts and demons also come to the villages in search of the abundant crops. The next reason for the large number of demons is the location. There is a large mountain range to the north and a demon forest to the northwest. The powerful demons that live there sometimes come to the Kamras Plains in search of prey. There are many animals and demons who getting food on in the Kamras Plains. The Kamras Plains are a rich land for high-ranked demons that normally live in the Great Mountains or the Demon Forest. There are many other theories, such as the concentration of magic power, 
or the fact that there are so many humans that people and nature are not in harmony, but these are the two most popular theories. As much as it brings blessings, it also brings dangers. The people who live in the Camras Plains naturally grow up to be strong and sturdy, with a sense of gratitude. My family, the Fahrenheit family, is no exception to this. Together with our people, we give thanks to nature, while resolutely dealing with demons that threaten us and protecting our people and land. Such a way of life is required of us, the Frontier Count family. That's why, as the next head of the family, I need to know more about demons. If I can't make a decision when the time comes, I'm not qualified to be the leader. Well, I've put a lot of things in order, but the bottom line is that I'm going on a voluntary training mission to defeat demons. This is the first time I've ever risked my life in a battle, let alone going against demons. The mock battles I usually have with my father are mock battles, not fights for my life. Of course, I would get injured, but never so recklessly that I would be left with after effects. What I need is the ability to resist the pressure that comes with fighting for my life, and the ability to apply myself flexibly in times of danger. Just because I'm only six years old doesn't mean I can't be flexible. You never know when a threat will come. Okay, I am ready. A water bottle, snacks, salt, a fountain pen, mayes knife, a leather bag, and a throwing knife with a trick. Let's go. I'm not practicing with my father today. I don't have any plans to play with May. The time was around nine in the morning. I wanted to be home by nightfall. I left the house and walked around to the backyard. Once I pass the mountain behind the house and go over the wall, I am no longer on the grounds. However, this entire vast land, including the Great Mountains and the Camras Plains, is the domain of my frontier family. Eight spoke asterisk. With my skill, shock. I runs through the Kamras Plains at a speed that is impossible for an ordinary human being. The scenery flowed by at a speed similar to that of a car driving down a main road. At times like this, I'm glad I have a lot of magic power. In order to achieve such a high speed, I was using, shock, with, body strengthening, applied, so the amount of magic power consumed was unbelievable. However, that doesn't mean I don't have the option of not using body enhancement. If I try to go as fast as a car in a raw state, my body will not be able to withstand the impact from the ground. Anyway, I have achieved super high-speed endurance running by pushing the violent magical power that ordinary people have long ago run out of magical power. Whoa, is that a demon? About 10 kilometers from north of the territorial capital of Heidberg, I spot a shadow it's still more than a kilometer away, but it doesn't seem to be human. The silhouette is too big for a human. More importantly, it looks like it's quadrupedal. As far as I know, normal humans are bipedal. I continued to run without slowing down, and when the distance between me and my opponent was only about 200 meters, I finally found out who it was. That's a green boar. Green boa. As the name suggests, it is a deep green boar shaped demon. I'm not an adventurer, but if I were, I'd rank it as a deer rank adventurer. It is a mysterious creature that is extremely ferocious despite its herbivorous nature, and for some reason it prefers to act alone. However, because it's a herbivore, it doesn't have that much muscle power, and it's not that difficult to deal with as long as you're careful not to rush it. It is said to be quite dangerous if it mimics the scenery of a forest because of its dark green color, but there is no problem at all because there are only a few forests around here. The dark green suddenly appears in the middle of the light green grass making it stand out. I'll take care of it. I took out a few knives from a leather pouch around my waist. The distance is only 50 meters. I'll take the first shot. I'll take the first strike. While throwing hard with my body strength and state, I generate a small, impact, on the handles of the throwing knives and use it as a driving force. The throwing knife that flew through the sky at the speed of arrow pierced the body of the sullen green boar that finally noticed my existence. Boaiawea. Boohoo. Really? Who would have thought that the green boa's cry would be Boaiawea? Thanks to this, I laughed out loud even though I was in the middle of a battle. Give me back my tension. Yeah, shackle rope. I activate the magic on my throwing knife to regain my tension. The next moment, 
a kind of magic wire extends from the throwing knife stuck in the green boa, wrapping the green boa around and restraining it. Boaya. Good. It seems I have succeeded. I was not sure if I could use it in a real battle, but it seems to work fine. The green boa, whose neck has been slashed open, convulses as if bouncing for a moment, but eventually loses its strength and stops moving. I stabbed it again with my magic sword to test it, but it didn't respond. It seems to be dead. Boaya. Eh, eh, eh. Phew. The first battle is over. It was surprisingly easy. I chose this as my opponent because I thought it would be no problem even with my current abilities, but since it was my first time, I was expecting to struggle a bit more. In fact, my magic worked so well that I won so easily that it was a bit of a letdown. It was worth the effort to try out a new way of using magic. This time, I used the method of imparting magic to an object. It's an advanced technique that you won't find in the magic compendium until it's applied. Difficulty level is probably B rank. It's not extremely strong, but it's a good magic that can be used in a certain way. Although the binding power is strong, it can only be used if it touches the enemy. I'm not going to forget to develop my shock, but I'm also going to work on other areas so that I don't become solely focused on shock. It looks like I'm growing right on target. Chapter 17 Now I'm puzzled. How should I bring this green boar home? From the looks of it, it must weigh at least 300 kilos. Even if I were to strengthen my body, I would never be able to carry it to home. I'm so tired of. I guess I should have brought a cart. However, there was nothing I could do about the things I didn't bring. I'll just dismantle it and throw away the worthless parts like the organs and legs. I had a leather bag, so I would only bring back the bare minimum of materials. I took out a leather bag and a knife made by May from my pouch, and began to dismantle the green boar while keeping an eye on my surroundings. I can directly feel the blade slicing through the skin of the demon. This is the first time I've ever dismembered an animal, including in my previous life. I have some knowledge about it. You can find books on how to dismantle demons in the study of the Frontier Count's house. But it seems that knowing how to do it and actually doing it are two different things. I couldn't cut the meat and skin as I had expected, which was quite annoying. It's amazing how skilled hunters and adventurers can dismantle this in an instant. The same goes for butchers, fishmongers, and chefs. Are the same way. Professional knives and dismantling scenes are so vivid that I never get tired of watching them. In contrast, this is my first time dismantling a piece of meat from. Oh. The murder scene was splendidly horrific. No, it wasn't murder because it was a boar that was dismembered, but in any case, it wasn't a scene that a six-year-old should be exposed to. Guts were strewn about, a red pool was spreading, and the smell of iron filled the air. And there seems to be an aura of horror in the air. Let's go home as soon as possible. It might even attract other demons to the area. The smell of dead demons can be a bait to attract other demons looking for meat. There is no other choice but to get out of this place as quickly as possible. I hurriedly stuffed the green boar's fangs, fur, fillets, loin and other valuable parts into my leather bag. I had to be very selective since I couldn't bring back the entire 300 plus kilogram behemoth, but thanks to my efforts, I was able to bring back only the most delicious parts of the meat, so the taste was quite promising. As for the fur and tusks, since it was the first demon I had ever hunted, I would give them for craftsmen's and keep that as a souvenir. Even though I carefully put value part in the leather bag, it still weighed about 40 kilos, so I used body strengthening before carrying it on my back. But still, heavy things are heavy. No matter how much I had strengthened my body with magic, 40 kilograms was still too heavy for a six-year-old kid. I made a firm decision that next time I would get a cart or something before I came. Eight spoke asterisk. Where? Did you catch this, Hal? Eberhard, are you serious? Oh, boy. Hal. Hal, wow. That was amazing. When I got home and took the meat to the kitchen, Mom, Dad, the chef, Elisa, my sister and brother were all surprised. After all, it was wide 40 kilograms. With the tusks and fur, the meat was actually about 30 kilos, but it was still a lot. A family of six would never be able to eat it all. 
even if we provided enough food for all the servants of the Fahrenheit family. Chef, I want you to serve this to the servants as well. You don't mind? Such a fine piece of meat is something we rarely get to eat. Well, I suppose it's a perk. If you say so, we will be very grateful. We'll prepare the best peony meat dish. The day after tomorrow? Not today? Yes. For example, fish tastes better when eaten on the same day, but meat has a deeper flavor when it has stayed for some time. Oh, I see. Green boars are in season right now, so the aging time is relatively short. The fat has been removed over the winter, and the meat is now gradually gaining fat from the blessings of spring. The meat is tight and has a marbling of melted fat that complements it, making it the most delicious. Oh! All the family members who heard the chef's explanation let out a squeal of admiration, their eyes shining with anticipation. But that's for the night after tomorrow. Today we'll have sautéed shoes fish with salt. Shoes fish. I like that fish, it's delicious. Sausage fish is a large freshwater fish, about a meter long, that lives in the rivers and lakes that flow through Fahrenheit. Family grounds as a river fish, it has a rather bland taste, but it is very tasty when grilled with a sprinkle of salt. I will begin the aging process immediately. Excuse me. With that, the chef took out a knife and began to carefully cut out the meat that I had roughly processed. In front of the meat in its best condition, the chef seemed to be so focused that he couldn't notice his surroundings. Well, let's get back to it. At my father's signal, we left the kitchen. We couldn't stand in the way of the chef. Then I remembered something and called out to my father. Hey, Dad. I wonder if there's a cart somewhere. Or even a horse-drawn cart. A cart. I'm sorry, I don't know where that is. S but I'm sure the trustees do. You've got my permission, so do what you want. All right. Thanks. The property manager is in the servants' hall's property department. I'm sure I can borrow it from them if I ask them. The green boa I brought back today weighed 40 kilos, but I had already thrown away about 260 kilos. An 85% loss is a lot. So, if possible, I would like to bring back the whole animal. I don't want to dismantle them on sight because it's too dangerous and more importantly, too much trouble. This is where a cart comes in handy. With a cart, I can bring back the whole thing, and if we take it directly to the Adventurer's Guild, they will take it back even if it is not dismantled. There will be some dismantling fees deducted, but even so, the income is sure to increase compared to bringing back only 40 kilos. In fact, since dismantling outside the city is dangerous, many adventurers bring back the entire material in a cart and dismantle it in the city. The coming and going of materials, adventurers, and dismantling contractors to the dismantling hut on the outskirts of town is secretly a famous feature of the city of Heidberg. Elisa, let's go see the trustee. Yes, Master Hal. I took Elisa with me to the servants' quarters. The servants' quarters is a bit far from the main building where our family lives, so it's a bit far to walk. Isn't it? I think it's nice and grand. That's what all have not say. What's that? Who are you imitating? That's my line. Master Hal. It didn't take long for us to be walking along, talking about trivial things. It's too far for me to walk alone, but it doesn't bother me too much when we're talking like this. It's such a subtle distance. The servants have their work cut out for them. Well, the administration section is at. Right this way. You're a real professional, aren't you? Well, I'm a servant after all, you know. Elisa led me to the door of the administration office. Yes, it's open. Excuse me. Then I opened the door of the administration office. Hello, Sir Eberhard. What can I do for you? A middle-aged man sitting at the far end of the desk stood up and asked me. I'm looking for a cart. Preferably a big one. I'm looking for a cart, preferably a big one. That can be pulled by one adult. A cart? If it's big enough for one adult to pull, it can be found at. Oh, I think it's in Second Warehouse. Hey, Anthony. Lead them to Second Warehouse too. Yes, Chief. Sir Eberhard. I'll show you the way. Elisa, come with us. 
the young servant called Anthony said so and agreed to show U.S. around. I'm sorry for barging out of the blue. Eight spoke asterisk. I'm sure you'll be pleased to know that the cart is the one we have here. Oh, this is nice. It looks pretty big. Well, if you don't mind me saying, it seems quite large for you, Sir Dot Eberhard, but are you sure? Anthony asks with concern. I can use body enhancement, Dot. I'm also going to modify the cart, but I'm not going to tell you that because it's still in the planning stages. I see, it is the blood of the Fahrenheit family, isn't it? At your age, you've already mastered magic. You'll only get paid for your praise. If I could have that much salary, there is nothing else I would want. I'm honored to serve you in this way. It seems that my family is a white company after all. I'm sure it's one of the most popular places to get a job in the Fahrenheit Frontier County. After that, I thanked Anthony and left him, and I headed back to the main building with Elisa, pulling a cart. On the way, I asked Elisa about it. Do you get a lot of money too? This is not harassment? I realized after I said it. Well, it's Elisa, so I guess it's okay. Well, I'm Master Hal's personal maid, after all. I'm still a high-class person in the world. Huh. Well, I guess I'll have to work you harder. No, not enough. For the time being, you'll have to ride in this cart. I'm embarrassed. You'll give away my weight. Well, I'm about twice as heavy as you. There's no point in comparing a twenty-year-old woman with a six-year-old boy. Chapter 18 the next afternoon. I had gotten a cart and had come to May's house empty-handed. May, are you there? I hadn't promised to play with her, but if she not, there I could just go home and do something else, so I called out to her without much hope. As I waited for a while, I heard a thud down the stairs, and May came running out of the workshop. Hello, Hal. It's been a long time. It's been a while, but it's just been one day. It's been a long time since I've had any friends besides you, Hal. For a moment, I thought it was the same with me, but then I remembered that I had Lily. It's not that I'm unsympathetic to the fact that I've forgotten about her, because I think she's more of a fiancé or girlfriend than a friend. It's not that I'm heartless. I'm sorry about that, but I can't come here every day either. Wouldn't it be better if I came to you? It's not that kind of problem, but for now. I have an errand to run, and I need to tell you about it first. You see. May, why don't you come to my house? Came to the Hal's house? Yes. I haven't invited you yet, and I also need your help with something. She smiled. I will came. Please wait a moment. As soon as I said this, May retreated into the house. As I waited for a few tens of seconds, May came back with a paper bag. What's that? It's a snack. I'm sorry to bother you. Is it okay? Sweets are expensive because they are sweet. Sugar is a luxury item in this world. In the Fahrenheit territory, plants like sugar beet are cultivated, so it is probably a little cheaper than in other territories, but even so, it is mostly used to add a little flavor to everyday dishes. Sweets that use a lot of sugar are a luxury item, and the commoners don't have many opportunities to eat them. No. It's not a sweet snack. Not sweet? It's more like rice crackers. I didn't know such an oriental snack existed, but it is a snack eaten in the land of the dwarves. You don't see many of them around here. I see. That's exciting. I'll take it. I was convinced, so May and I walked toward my parents' house, the Lord's Mansion. At first, May seemed to be enjoying herself, but as the buildings around us became more and more for high society, she began to talk less and less. Well, are we there yet? Hmm, not yet. It's a very nice town. Yes, it is. I'd like to live on the top floor of one of these buildings. The buildings around here are as high as two floors at the lowest and five or six floors at the highest. Naturally, because of the vertical height, the area per floor can be reasonably large. You could probably live in a room that is about the size of a two-bedroom apartment in Japan. And the rent would probably be 300,000 or 400,000 yen per month. The unit of currency in this country is the L, and one L is worth about one yen. From what I read in the books in my study, the average income of the common people in Heidberg is about 150,000 L's per month. 
the peasants living in the suburbs earn slightly less than that, but that doesn't seem to be a problem since they are mostly self-sufficient when it comes to food. Even at 150,000 L's a month, the low cost of living makes it worth about 200,000 yen, but in any case, it would be difficult for the average person to live in this apartment. Even if a couple works together, they will starve to death if they can only afford the rent. Well, in short, there are a lot of very rich people around here. Forgers are craftsmen who require specialized skills, so I guess they earn a certain amount of money among the common people, but I doubt they will ever reach the upper class. It was not unreasonable for May to feel a little uncomfortable in the high society of the city. But you know what, May? You're going to a much worse place now. I was thinking about this, feeling a bit sorry and mean inside, when May looked back at me, as if she had sensed something disturbing. What? I smiled at her and tried to cover it up. At the same time, I held her hand to prevent her from running away. It's a great way to make sure you're getting the most out of your time with us. It's cute. Feeling a different kind of excitement than I did with Lily, I gripped May's hand tightly and kept walking, never letting her go. We walked for about ten minutes. After passing through the upstream district and the public district, we finally arrived at the main gate of the Lord's Mansion. Ha! Huh. Where is your home? May looked around and tilted her head, as if she was wondering why there were no more houses around. I pointed to the main gate and said to her, Welcome to my home. Welcome to my home. Ha! Huh. I greeted the gatekeeper and asked him to open the gate, which slowly opened with a squeaky sound. It was the first time in my life, including my previous life, that I had invited a friend to my house, and although it was half-heartedly, it seemed to have been a success. Eight spoke asterisk. It's a big castle. May is excited to see my parents' house, which is more like a mansion than a castle. My family's house in Fahrenheit is not a high-rise castle like Cinderella Castle or Neuschwanstein Castle in Germany, as you might imagine when you hear the word castle. It is more like a wide castle like the Chambord or Valandry castles in France. A palace might be closer to the image. When I was still living in Japan, I was interested in castles both in the East and the West, and I did some research on castles in various countries. My current house looks just like the castle I thought was beautiful at that time, so as a person who lives here, I am very excited every day. However, perhaps because I'm a Japanese who lives in a rabbit hutch, I don't really like the idea of having too much space. It would be a pain just to go to the next building, and if it rained, it would be worse. I wish the buildings were at least closer together. Ha, 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 Hal, you're lie the prince. It's not the prince. The prince is in the imperial capital. So you're a nobility? Yes. My real name is Eberhard Karlheinz von Flensburg Fahrenheit. I'm the eldest son of the Count of Fahrenheit. Ha ha. When I told her my real name, she dropped to her knees and fell down. She even stretched her arms out politely, like something out of a cartoon. I've never seen anyone actually do this before. I guess it's a good thing that the ground is grass and there's no dirt on my clothes. Well, May? Ha ha. It seems that she got the wrong idea about nobility. Perhaps her strange way of speaking came from the same place. I'm slightly curious about what happened in May past. Face up. Ha ha. She raises her head while in the bonsai position. It's kind of funny. Well, would it help if you did it normally? Normally, is it? Yes. We're friends, right? Then it doesn't matter what we are. Indeed, we are friends. The smile returned to May's face. I'm sure you'll agree that she's much prettier when she's smiling. Now, there's a reason why I called you here. Reason? Well, you don't need a reason to invite a friend to your house, so technically, this is the right time to invite her. I don't know. What is it? May, with a puzzled look on her face, asked cutely. I want to remodel the cart. Do you even have a cart? Yes. Come with me. I took her to the backyard where I kept the cart. The reason I called May today was because I wanted to modify the cart. The car I got yesterday was indeed sturdy and well made, but the resistance to turning the wheels was a bit too much for the technology of this world. The axle was coated with some kind of fur and grease, 
but compared to modern Japanese wheels, it was still difficult to move. That's why I wanted to do the best part of reincarnating in another world, cheat on modern knowledge. What I wanted to make was a ball bearing. This mechanism, also known as a ball bearing, consists of a metal ball sandwiched between two metal rings that can be closed together to reduce frictional resistance during rotation and allow for rotation with less force. Surprisingly, it has a long history on Earth, and I think it's not impossible to do it with the technology of this world. I'm sure this will improve the performance of the cart's wheels. However, even though I have the knowledge, I don't have any metal working skills. This is where May, who made her debut as a forger a few days ago, comes in. I want you to make something that I tell you. I understand. It sounds interesting. If she didn't want to do it, I was going to quit, but she seemed to be enjoying her first time hearing about crafts. Maybe this will work out. I immediately explained the structure of the ball bearing using diagrams. May's eyes were shining as she listened intently to my explanation. At that time, I had no idea that this would be the moment that would lead to the birth of a great inventor. Chapter 19 Wow! I running around the vast backyard, towing a cart that was overwhelmingly more powerful than ever. Aha! Nearly was May, shaking her red hair and screaming. It's too early, it's too early. I'm not done yet. I'm going over the edge. I didn't expect May to be so dexterous. Even though she was blessed with an excellent master and was born as a dwarf that excelled at forging, she had just started her training a few days ago. I only thought that she would be better than me, who had no experience at all, but the result was this. To be frank, May is a genius. Light. Karts is light. May is a six-year-old girl, so she must weigh about 20 kilograms. If you think of a burlap sack as 20 kilos of rice, you'll know it's heavy. And yet, Cart is so light. It is so light that it seems as if nothing is riding on it, and it behaves so comfortably. It's as refreshing as riding a bicycle down a slope. It already was dusk. The sun was beginning to set, and it was time to call it a day. However, the joy of completing this project after several hours of work is inexplicable, and I am venting it by running around with May like this. Eight spoke asterisk. It was noon. After calling Mai and explaining the work process to her, I led her to the secret base. We arrived at the pit house, which was as magnificent as ever, and started our work there. First, we needed to secure materials. We used metal. But even if we say metal, lead and copper are not good enough. We needed iron, which has overwhelming strength and durability. No matter how spacious the Fahrenheit family's house was, it was a nobleman's residence, so it was not as well equipped as a workshop. All it had was a small oven for baking bread and an incinerator for burning garbage. There is no such thing as a lump of iron. There was no such thing as an iron ingot, much less a furnace for melting iron. When I told May that the first thing we need to do was to collect the materials, she said, leave it to me. She seemed confident, so I let her do as she wanted. First of all, May showed her dwarven characteristics. Dwarves are a race indigenous to a land called the Nord Peninsula, which is located across the sea in the northern part of the Imperial Kingdom. The Nord's Peninsula and the Imperial Kingdom are connected by land, but there are other countries in between, so the only direct route is by sea. The dwarves who live on the Nord Peninsula are different from other kind of people in that they are shorter and hay, both men and women, and the men are muscular and hairy, while the women are remarkably youthful. Gnomes are the generic name for spirits that live in the earth. They are said to control earth magic, and are said to exist all over the world. I've heard that the master of these gnomes is called the Earth Mother Goddess, but I don't know that much about the earth attribute, so I'll skip the details. So, because the dwarf race has a high affinity with these gnomes, the entire race has a high aptitude for earth magic. And it's a universal property that applies even to six-year-old dwarves who are not particularly skilled in magic. It's a long story, but Meru Arendel, the daughter of dwarves, used earth magic by natural instinct and intuition. The next moment I inwardly wondered if the gnome would react to such a lazy spell, and then I was once again annoyed with myself for having reacted that way. As soon as May chanted an incantation that could not be described as serious or insincere, the ground rose up, bobbing, and then familiar black grains of sand sprang up from the ground. No way? 
I shouted like a rock-type demon mimicking a tree. With a random incantation, what May procured from the ground was unmistakably pure iron sand that didn't even need to be reduced. May. What was that? I don't know. Maybe all dwarves can do it. She didn't quite understand what she was doing, but it was probably spirit magic. If a person with no talent to magic can use it, there is no other way. The fact that she is loved by the spirit of the earth suggests that this is the case. In the first place, May's magic power is not that much. She may be older than me, but compared to me, she doesn't have much. Spirit magic requires less magic power because the spirit can perform the magic with the highest efficiency even with less magic power. This was not the end of May's frightening glimpse. Just as she thought she had procured iron sand, she began to cast another spell. The next thing he knew, he was casting another spell. She said, please make this iron round, and make it a scarf. I'm not surprised anymore. That's how dwarves are, I thought. As expected, the piles of iron sand scattered on the ground began to change shape. And become round. The iron was not being melted by heat, but it was shaping itself beautifully. This is truly magic. I'm sure it's not strange because magic is a part of everyday life in this world. I'm not sure what to make of it, but as a former Japanese, I feel a little strange about it. Finally, we must attach this. May fiddled with the finished parts and gradually assembled them into the shape of a bearing. I watched her from the side for more than ten minutes. Finally, the ball bearing it's had been waiting for was completed. It's done! It was awesome. I checked T if it worked properly, and found that it rotated surprisingly smoothly. Since it was made with spirit magic, the margin of error was much smaller than when it was handmade. It is a mystery to me why civilization has not developed this before. After that, we repeated this process three more times to prepare the bearings for all the wheels. The wooden wheels of the cart were not an exact circle, so the two of us had to scrape and file them so that the bearings would fit properly, and it was almost evening when the cart was completed. It's done. It wasn't much work, but we were happy with what we had done. I shared the joy of completion with May. And that brings us back to the scene at the beginning. Eight spoke asterisk. I'm tired from all the running around, and May is nauseous from all the rocking, so we lie down on the floor of the secret base. I'm tired of running, and I'm tired of being rocked. Children do noisy things, but I think I was too noisy this time. I think I'll act a little more calmly next time. After resting and recovering for a while, we discussed our future prospects. I think I'll be able to make more money now that I've made the cart, she said. Now that she made the cart, I think her income will increase, and she might want to get another one made. So what do you think? Why don't you set up your own workshop here at the secret base? A workshop of mine own? May's eyes lit up at the idea of her own workshop. I guess having your own workshop is one of the dreams of a craftsman. Even if it's a child, it's still a dream. I'm going to hunt demons with the tools May makes and earn money, and you will use the money to make many new tools. That's how we'll make more and more useful inventions. It sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? That's great! How you are genius! As for me, I think May is more of a genius than me, because she's six years old and has that kind of skills but I don't think she'd understand that even if I told her. Well, tomorrow I'm going to go hunting for demons outside the city. I'm going to go hunting for demons outside the city tomorrow, and you can think about the workshop I'm going to build here. I'll pay for the materials, so you can do whatever you want with it. I'm looking forward to it. Hmm, I wonder what I'll make. After showing off her magic so much, May's excitement and joy is appropriate for her age, and it's a cute sight. If she stays here, she can train as much as she wants, she can learn detailed knowledge of magic from me, and most importantly, she can gain scientific knowledge of modern Japan. I was both looking forward to and dreading May's future, wondering what kind of forger she would become. Chapter 20 The next day, after finishing my studies with my tutor, I asked my dad over lunch. Dad. What's up? He replied with a toothpick in his mouth. I'd like to be an adventurer. Can a six-year-old be an adventurer? Oh, you're finally interested in being an adventurer? Father muttered, but he seemed to be grinning and enjoying himself. 
For some reason, my mother's reaction, which is usually negative about anything dangerous, was not bad. What? You can be an adventurer, all in all. The only thing you need to be an adventurer is your ability, and your age, gender, and status are completely irrelevant. The only thing that matters is whether or not you are a citizen of the empire. If you apply for it, you can easily register as a foreigner. That's rather graceful. Adventurers are basically responsible for themselves. The guild won't get involved no matter what happens, but registration itself is pretty easy. We are used to travel around the empire with a party, my mom said, her face was somewhat happy. I'm sure she's reminiscing about the good old days of her youth. Oh, I forgot to mention that criminals are not allowed. If you're an adventurer, you're not going to be able to work as an adventurer. In the first place, when you are in prison, you are subjected to forced labor, so it is physically impossible for you to work as an adventurer. That's true. But there are quite a few criminal gangs. It's a rough profession, and it's inevitable. I see. So the chances of getting into trouble are reasonably high. Especially kids like you, who are often the target of bullying. It's a standard thing when registering as an adventurer. Well, bullying newcomers is common in other workplaces as well. Even if I can register successfully, there's going to be some kind of trouble. It's a good idea to give up on that. It's a path every adventurer must take. That's right. How did it go for your dad? When I asked this, my father and mother looked at each other and started to grin. We were kicked. I've never seen mom smile like that before. If you're a man, you'll have to fight back. The guild does not interfere in disputes between adventurers. Shaking off the sparks of fire that fall on you is a necessary to obtain power to survive in a cutthroat society. Al, you'll be fine. You are pride and joy. Apparently, they were saying, do what you want. The parents' permission was now granted. T. Hank you. I'm going to register right after this. The registration process would be easier if you had some identification. Take your family crest with you. Yeah, okay. My dad handed me a mithril key tag with our family crest on it around the end of last year, saying it was important, and it was stored in my room. When he gave it to me, I thought, isn't that an inro? The key tag is an item that shows noble status, so no one but our family can touch it. I can't ask Elisa to bring it, I'll have to go look for it myself later. I don't know where I put it. Eight spoke asterisk. After spending half an hour searching for the key tag, I arrived at the Heitberg branch of the Adventurers Guild, located on the western edge of the territorial capital of Heitberg. It's a splendid four-story building that's worthy of the term solid and sturdy. The grounds seemed to be quite large, which made me realize the enormity of the Adventurers Guild. The reason why the Adventurers Guild was located at the western end of the city while the other guilds, such as the Commercial Guild, the Craftsman's Guild, and the Agricultural Guild, were located in the center of the city was simply because of the delivery of materials. While the other guilds do not transport as many goods, the Adventurers Guild brings in a large number of demon corpses called materials almost every day. In some cases, human corpses are brought in as well, making it impossible to set up a facility in the center of the city. That being said, adventurers love the fact that it's easy to carry in, so I guess there's no problem with that. Incidentally, the Agricultural Guild, which is also thought to handle a large amount of crops, actually does not have a problem with being located in the center of the city, since its main duties are to adjust distribution volume and prices and to survey the productivity of the land, and the guild does not directly handle tax collection or sales. I was a little surprised to see that this was not what I expected, but apparently that's how it works. Well, let's just go inside and register as an adventurer. If I don't register, no matter how many demons I hunt, they won't buy them. I want to earn money on my own without having help of parents, the best way is to register as an adventurer. When I opened the wooden double doors, I heard a squeak. But if you think that's going to get you the attention of everyone inside, it's not. It's just like City Hall on Earth. They don't have the kind of culture that would go out of its way to stare at people who come in. However, as an obvious child, I seemed to stand out a bit, and when they saw me walking towards the reception desk, they looked at me in a confused way, as if they were wondering if they should talk to me. Well, I'm not an adventurer yet, you know. 
the premise of self-responsibility doesn't apply to me. I guess that's what I'm wondering if they should call out to me. Um. Yes, what's wrong? I talked to the receptionist who was closest to me. She responded in the way a child would. Hmm, I'm not used to this kind of reaction. Maybe it's because I act like a child at home, but my dad and mom don't really treat me like one. I want to register as an adventurer. Oh, do you have your parents' permission? The receptionist replied with a slightly troubled look. I don't understand how I would feel. If I were a hello work employee and a six-year-old child came to me asking for a job, I'm sure I would react the same way. But you know what, sis? We may look like kids, but we're adults on the inside. I'm getting it. I don't know if it will work. With that said, I took out the key tag with the family crest of the Counts of Fahrenheit from my pocket. By the way, if you are a person in a slum, or if you are a person in this city who grew up with a primary education in a shrine, even ordinary people should know this family crest. I don't know about the crests of other aristocrats, but I'm sure I'll learn only the crests that indicate the imperial family and the Fahrenheit family. I'm sure you've learned the crests of the royal family and the Fahrenheit family. Oh, I beg your pardon. I don't want to make a scene, so you can act normal. I just want to register as an adventurer. I'll start the process then. As expected, the key tag. As if I can't see this crest in my eyes. Usually, the family crest is the judgment ability of the head only those who are allowed to act as representatives of the aristocrats of the house outside are handed over by the head. In other words, showing me a key tag with a family crest here means that I am here at my own discretion, with the father of the Counts of Fahrenheit admitting that I am a full-fledged person. I. If that's the case, then the entire responsibility lies with me. If any problem arose, it would be my fault for using my authority as a nobleman to cause the problem, and the receptionist would not be vilified. This was one of the reasons why the receptionist's attitude had changed. Please write your name, age, and hometown here. Yes. I filled my personal information on a piece of high-quality paper. The receptionist's face was a little tense as she looked at my long name, which was peculiar to aristocrats. Ordinary people's names are much shorter. Basically, it's just the last name and first name. Or in some cases, just the first name. Well, these days, it is rare to see just a name. I don't know if that's good or bad. Leaving aside the name situation of the commoners of the empire, I finished filling my personal information for the moment. The next step is probably a standard one. Magic power registration. Yes. Thank you very much. I'll start the explanation now. Huh. There are eleven ranks for adventurers, from the bottom to the top, F, E, D, C, B dash, B, B plus, A dash, A. A plus, S, these ranks are there to protect adventurers and to increase the success rate of their missions. The ranks are used to determine the appropriate level of difficulty for the adventurer receiving the request. As a result, there may be multiple rounds of testing for advancement. Apparently, there is no magical power registration. I was a little disappointed, but I decided to listen to the explanation quietly. And adventurers are limited in the requests they can accept according to their rank. Specifically, you can only accept requests up to one rank above you. There are no restrictions on the lower ranks, but please note that your rank will not increase if you only target the lower ranks. That's obvious. In the case that you've got a lot of money to spend, you'll be able to take advantage of it. If your failed request, you will be charged a penalty of about 10% of your compensation. However, this does not apply to cases where the request has been taken over through proper procedures. This part also makes sense to me. I have no particular doubts about this. This time, you will start at F rank, but F rank is a little different from the other ranks. F rank is basically for chores that can only be done in towns and villages, or for gathering low herbs. Please note that requests that involve fighting will be accepted from E rank. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Do you have any questions? How do I become an E rank? If you complete dozens of simple F rank collection requests or multiple E rank requests, your rank will automatically increase. Anything else? No, I'm fine for now. Here is your guild card. If you lose it, 
it will have to be reissued, and you will need to provide another form of identification and pay a fee of 10,000 Ls to have it reissued. Oh, what happens if I lose it or it gets stolen? In that case, you will have to go to the nearest guild and request that your card be suspended. Please note that while your card is suspended, you will not be able to make any withdrawals, even if you are the cardholder. If you have a different ID, the suspension will be lifted, so don't worry. I see. It's like a credit card. It doesn't have a photo on it, so it can be misused by others if they want to, but if you notice that you've dropped it, you can stop its use with a smartphone app or a phone call. It seems primitive, but it's an excellent system. I'm sure you can understand why you don't need to register your magic power. This is it then. If you want to report the results of your request, please go to the counter here or the warehouse next door. We also buy materials at the warehouse next door, so please go there when you've finished your request. Yes. The guild staff will support your activities as adventurers from now on. All of us at the guild look forward to seeing you in action. Thank you. I look forward to working with you. That's how I became an adventurer. Now, I'm going to hunt a lot of demons and raise my rank fast. <laughs>